GC. It's the All Pro Philly Show, hosted by Jari Evans and Gerald Colton. Jari Evans, my partner, was one of 20 semifinalists Guys, here, for this year, the 2023 you. Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's a, it's a huge honor. One step closer. It's a process, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You always say there is no statistics for offense in line, but you know, I, I, I steal statistics, right? <laughs> share statistics with my with my quarterbacks, with my running backs. Also, you know, with sack totals, how many sacks you give up, how many pressures you give up. So there, there are measurables, like you said, or credentials, but always talk Oh, Drew and my running backs that, you know, I'm, I'm taking some of them stats. You're listening to the All Pro Philly Show right here on The Gambler. Good, good. Your home for... All right, stand by us. DAS and WD. Broadcasting from the Top Dog Law Studio. Philadelphia. Get top dollar for your accident at topdoglaw.com. That's topdoglaw.com. We are 102.5 FM, The Gambler. Nobody brings Philadelphia fans closer together like the Green Legion. From tailgates in South Philly to invading enemy territory, this group is home to the true Philadelphia sports fan. Now, their party hits the airwaves. Quimby, Michael Diaz, Chris Sack, Slash, Super Sam, and legendary wide receiver Irving Fryer always keep the conversation going. So crack a beer, take a shot, and join the virtual tailgate now on Green Legion Radio. Yup. All right, I guess there's no music today. Way to go. Way to go, Jansen, back in studio. What music are you looking for? I don't, I, I'm confused on that. Everybody, this is the Green Legion Radio <laughs> Player Show here on Fox Sports, The Gambler, 102.5 FM, Philadelphia. Broadcasting from Live Casino here in South Philadelphia. It's also a great night because we have every hourly employee at Xfinity Live here for their Christmas party where we have our tailgates and where every single one of them can't stand me. It's great. I wonder why they can't stand you. Yeah, hey, guess what? One, they how's... said that about you, too. Well, that's okay. I know why they don't can't stand me. I wonder why they can't stand Who's you. Who's working if they're not working? Er, Irv's like, I played in this city. I know they don't yeah. stand. They can't stand. They can't stand. <laughs> Tell me something I don't, I don't already know. Is there just an open bar across the street? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody, we're an iHeart radio station. Again, if you're in the South Philadelphia area, anywhere around, we're here for two hours tonight. We're going to enjoy the hell out of this time. Make sure you download the iHeart radio app, rate, review, download, subscribe our show as well by subscribing to Fox Sports Philadelphia, The Gambler, and then subscribing to Green Legion Radio. Next to me, producing the show, uh, the show, slash, 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 slash. We're just going with that now. I like that better. I still yep. like the gobbler. Uh, the gobbler. <laughs> Season's over. I said slash. that last week. Chris Sackmaster, Sack Attack, Reggie. Ooh, ha, ha. Next to him, host of your Philadelphia Eagles Insider Podcast, Mr. Dave Spadaro. How are you, sir? Great. 11 and 1, great. 11 Spuds. and 1 is great. 11 and 1 feels great and smells great. Not going to lie. Cross from me on I'm the sure other, what you ate this morning. <laughs> on the other yeah. side, your number one overall draft pick in the 1962 NFL draft. <laughs> Yikes. There's no respect. It's just amazing. <laughs> None. No, it just gets worse every week. Every week it just gets worse. He goes away a week, he I, comes back even sassier. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm only gonna take so much of this abuse. Why do you think I keep you out of swinging the, distance? Yeah, before this table gets turned over. <laughs> Everybody, legendary Eagles and NFL wide receiver, 17 years. The Reverend, the Doctor, Irving Fryer. Yeah. Good, to be here. Good to be here. And of course, our support cast in the back. And by that, I do not mean jock straps, intern Lauren, and, and just graduated from intern Super Sam Brady. Coming ah. off a win from her husband last night. Ooh, home record. That's great for us. We got, Hold the, fifth, on a we second. got the fifth pick of the draft right yeah, now. Yeah, guess what? First, we needed that to keep the Saints in line. <laughs> She's still and, a home record. And we need the Bucks to win the division. You know why? Because on the off chance it happens, I want to beat that bastard up here. <laughs> All right? You just but told Kazir you couldn't cuss. <laughs> I said bastard. Yeah, bastard's fine. Is it really? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's ready to approve. Good. Times, have Time yeah, to times have changed. Times have changed. Yeah. Add one to the Earth's vocabulary. And, and, and thanks. <laughs> and thanks for, you know, destroying my buildup here because our Philadelphia Eagle guest of the night. We advertise that. 
everybody from McCungy, Pennsylvania, linebacker Kaiser White. Yeah, yeah, yeah baby. Me, man. I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you. Uh, a uh, uh, small, uh, small side note. Uh, my parent, uh, my father, and grandparents grew up in McCungy. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, lay, lay on the guys. McCungy um, is that Lehigh? Is that is that what's the town up there? That's um, yeah, it's the Vegas. Le- it's the Lehigh Valley. It's all the Lehigh Valley. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, it's coal mining country actually. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I guess it used to be. I don't know what it is now, but yeah. uh, it's not my, Scranton, my, right? It's not like Scranton. It's, it's not, not that far up. Okay. Yeah, Scranton about an hour away. Okay. Yeah. It's nothing but Wi-Fi now. <laughs> And so everybody, we have an hour with our guest Kaiser, and honestly, one of one of our our, our, our best and first off season pickups. Honestly, Kaiser, you, you have you. no idea how much I have been bitching for years <laughs> to address the linebacker. Position. You have no idea. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of that, man. He, he's about to, <laughs> you're about to find out. <laughs> well, we're also talking about. Somebody coming over from the Chargers. Well, let's go through your entire bio. I might be jumping a little bit here. 26 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, 6'2", 234. Is that about accurate for your playing Maybe right now? a little 6'3". You know. I was going to say, you look bigger than 6'2". <laughs> nah, I'm, six I got, I'm not going to lie. You, you're, you're kind of the most menacing figure we've it had. It depends on the cleats that he wears it's, that yeah, Sunday, it's right? So, <laughs> it's funny how you, for an athlete, you can be off with the weight. Right. You can't be, be off, off with the height. height. Yeah. You can't be off with the height. Don't no short me. The height got to be there. Well, Allen Iverson was listed at six foot. We all know that was generous. They gave me six one at the combine. I'm like, man, I've never heard that at Dale. Allen Iverson was wearing Gene Simmons elevator shoes to get to that height. <laughs> uh, Emmaus High School. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, East Penn Conference, right? Pretty, East Penn. Yeah, real pretty, good. Conference. Pretty competitive. Yeah, for sure. Tell us about that, because you know a lot of people don't know about your your, your early years, and yeah, man, we have an hour like, for you to give us all you want. Yeah, I feel like it's a real underrated uh, area uh, for football, even though it's really good. Um, you know, Kevin White, which is my big brother, top 10 draft pick, played in that division. Saquon Barkley, top five draft pick, played in that division. Jahan Dodson, top 20 draft pick, played in that division. Andre Williams, Heisman uh, runner-up, Boston College, played for the Giants for a while in that division. Joe Williams played running back for the 49ers. Played in, yeah, we got some guys. Yeah, there's some, there's you some know players the that come out what, of that. What was Pee Wee football like? Um, was, was it like was everybody just crushing? So you, so you know the crazy thing is, man. Um, in my younger years, when I was playing Pop Warner, I played for Allen Park. This is when I was living in Allentown. I lived in Allentown for a while when I moved from New Jersey, and I played. Great Billy Joel song. I, I played for this team called Allen Park, and we used to always play uh, Parkland Emmaus, which was you know the top dogs yeah. and like Pop Warner. And I always said, man, I'm trying to go to Emmaus the way they was just killing us 40s. <laughs> so when I got to high school and stuff like that, I knew that was somewhere I wanted to play just because I like how they ran things. And they had a, a lot of good coaches. And I, I know uh, educational wise, it was a lot better than, you know, the Allentown area. So that's why I wanted to go over there. Because you're how competitive. I mean, the, the Kevin White story is it's remarkable that two the brothers made it to the NFL together. And, and I want like, did you fall in love with football at the same time? How competitive were you with each other? Do you yeah. look back and think we really made each other better? Oh yeah, for sure. Because I'm one of seven, but it's uh, three brothers that actually made it. My brother Karan, he he played. Uh, he was on the Bengals and the Steelers for uh, preseason and stuff like that. I thought he should have got drafted with me at West Virginia. He had over a thousand yards, thirteen touchdowns, ran a four five, one ninety, putting up two twenty five, like twenty three times on the bench. But you know, it just didn't work out for him. But uh, you know, being the youngest, it definitely made me. A real tough competitor, you know. Uh, my brother showed me at an early age not to take any mess from anybody, and they just pushed me. I appreciate you, you know. covering that one up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, they, uh, you know, told me everything I pretty much know and uh, groomed me to be the player that I am today. It's uh, it's always interesting when there's a, a, an athletic family. Uh, as a matter of fact, our first guest of the year, which we're going to talk about uh, a little bit later on. I mean. Britton Covey. Britton Covey. Uh, oh, we're definitely going to talk, oh, we're, we're gonna talk about that now. No, <laughs> no we're going to no. wait till later. Uh, we're going to wait, we're gonna wait yeah, till later. I've but. been telling you, I've been telling you, that's my one question to him today, but but that's all right. We'll talk about that later. All right. I've got one question <laughs> for Kaiser today, and it's about the special team. All right. Uh, so being kind of in that middle area of Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. were you an Eagles fan growing up? Yeah, so, uh, all right, let me set it straight. I was, <laughs> uh, of course, I like the Eagles because they're in my backyard, but I was a real big Peyton Manning fan growing up. So the Colts was like my number one team. 
But, you know, I, it's I, OK. I, you can leave now. Nah, <laughs> I was a big Vic fan, you know, and I, I always followed the Eagles. The Eagles was my first NFL game I ever came to and things like that. So, you know, I always followed the Eagles. But Peyton Manning was my favorite football player. So I always watched the coach. You know, it's really weird. Like I everybody always asks me if you nobody cares out there. But like, do you watch the Manning cast? Right. Yeah. I hate Eli because he's a giant, right? And I just never, I just never liked Peyton. So Man. I don't, I don't want, I Peyton never Manning. want to do anything to do with those Peyton guys. Manning, Nothing. The greatest quarterback to me ever. Sam will agree with that, I guess. <laughs> Anybody but Brady. <laughs> yeah, man. So, well, I'm entertained by the Manning cast. Like, I, yeah, I to me, it. I if, if they're on, yeah. I choose them over Buck and Aikman. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I mean, so unless the Eagles are playing. Yeah, if the Eagles sure. are playing, I need Buck and Aikman. <laughs> but if it's just watching casually on a Monday night, it's always Peyton and Eli. It's, it's a great watch. I'm, I'm with I'm with Spuds on that. I got to go with you on that, Spuds. I, I just – they just – Too much of them. Like yeah. I, I don't much. know what it is about them, but – they just rubbed me the wrong way. Irv is yeah. just jealous it's not him and his nephew that are doing they're the not, They're not stuff. Johnny Gill? <laughs> Trust me, I'm not jealous. <laughs> I, by Listen, the way, if you guys... I'd, I'd rather be poor and look like me than to be rich and look like them. Well, oh, that's oh, not oh, saying oh, much. Geez. I was about to say, you're not setting a very hard, <laughs> yeah, high bar there. <laughs> but if you want to see something funny, look at the table behind us right now. Again, they're sitting. Yes, they're sitting behind us, sharing, and we're on the forefront. Sharing, sharing, sharing a, an headset. awful headset here. We'll take care of that. <laughs> we'll later on. Um, let's see here. All right, uh, number forty-three. Yeah. Uh, it, you're one off, and it pisses me off every time. Forty-four, ladies, that's me. Get some cold cuts. Get some cold. My favorite Geico commercial. <laughs> Icky Woods, baby, in the ah, in the delicate Icky Woods. Uh, you know what's even funnier about that? Only one player. Has ever worn the number forty-four for the Philadelphia Eagles? Yeah, Tom Brookshire, right? Tommy Brookshire. Yeah. Absolutely. I was trying to get it when I came over here. They told me it was crazy, retired. crazy. Yeah. We used to retire a lot of numbers, and then they realized that they're well, it's, they're running out of numbers. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Three, Aaron Sproles, the last one to wear forty-three. Yeah, forty-three. Yep. Came from the Chargers too. That's, That's great. Right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. How? Why do you? What, tell us about the journey to college and and eventually ending up at West Virginia. What What happened at yeah, high school? At one hundred percent, like uh, two years in. For those that don't know, two years at Lackawanna right. uh, College. I, actually, uh, if I can expand a little bit on Dave's question, mm -hmm. uh, you gave up scholarships to Pittsburgh, Arizona State, Louisville, Illinois. Oklahoma. Yeah, I had a bunch of uh, places. USC. What, um, uh, what, 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 what landed you on so, West Virginia? I mean, you went from the sticks to the sticks. We get it. Yeah, but uh, Good party school from what, what I hear. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Top party school. Top party. You know, after doing Juco for two years, I'm trying to have some fun. Man, so I feel like West Virginia was the spot to be. Big John but, Denver uh, fan? Yeah, yeah. Country Roads, man. Yes. That's my song right there. But um, the thing that really led me there was uh, I'm real big on, like, loyalty. I'm not really too big on, you know, hype, going to the biggest school, because sometimes that don't even pan out. It's like, yeah, I might be at the biggest school. I could be on the sideline. What? I'm just doing it for extra fame or clout. Like, I just wanted to go to the best situation and uh, be loyal to who's loyal to me. And that was West Virginia. That was my first, very first offer. Um, you know, they gave my brother a shot to change my family life, um, both of my brothers. So, you know, I felt like it was only right to go to a spot that, you know, jumped on me first. All the other schools kind of, Penn State, all those other schools, they kind of jumped on me after West Virginia offered me. West Virginia seen my talent uh, firsthand and, you know, accepted me for me. And, uh, you know, it, it felt like family up there. And it's a direct pipeline from uh, my junior college to West Virginia. A lot of guys went there. And uh, Dana Hogerson. It's like family to me. So, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to be up under his wing. And, uh, you know, I just felt like that was the spot for me. Was that the same head coach that recruited your brother that yeah, you wound yeah. up going there? So you, so you, because He's at Houston that, now. That's yeah. the thing with those bigger programs that you're talking about. Like, the, the, there's not a lot of loyalty there. Yeah, like, like you, you can commit and then he's going a year later because he's sure. going to the next big job. Sure. A guy like that, West Virginia, who you had you had that yeah. rapport with. I feel like I could brother. trust him. A lot yeah. of the other schools, I just didn't really know them as well as I knew Dana. So, you know, I just wanted to you know, go go back on where where I trusted, you know, so I feel like West B was the spot for me. Because you're where were you? How old were you? What was the scene when Kevin got drafted by the Chicago Bears? I think seven overall. Yeah, I was at uh, I was a freshman in junior college, man. I actually got to be there with him and be in the green room. Uh, it was my first time, uh, you know, meeting uh, Deion Sanders. I was a little starstruck. So it was a good, a good feeling. Good. Who, experience. by the way, just took the head coaching job at University of Colorado. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, so man, it was it was a great experience, and it just uh, it pushed me to want to, you know, get to that level one day, and you know, here I am. 
and that that like a, a rookie contract number seven that you mentioned what AJ Brown also mentioned last week and I think fans just forget the purpose of why a player plays the game yes you love it yes you're very talented but at the end of the day you got bills to pay you got mm -hmm. a family to support mm -hmm. that changed how how in what ways did it change Kevin's life and your family's life. Like Man, uh, the first thing he did was he retired both of my parents. Um, you know, he real smart with his money. All he care about is family. So he ain't going to see him with a lot of watches, uh, crazy jewelry. Fancy cars. Like yeah. Man, he got money he do what his money is all about family. And, uh, you know, he try to, you know, teach us the game as, as he goes. And, uh, you know, he put us in a multi-million dollar house up in Lehigh Valley. You know, he just took care of us, man. You know, and uh, that's what it's all about. So, so how is it now that you're back home? What's it like being back here playing? Oh man, it's in the a it's, family. Yeah, family it's a friends. great experience. You know, because being in Cali, you know, they would get out to games, but they couldn't get to every game uh, here. You know, I'm having yeah, traffic's dirt. bad. Yeah, I'm having. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a long drive to Cali. For sure. You know, I'm having 30, 40, to, you know, 20 plus at every you know home game. Even when we play the Giants this week, it's gonna be a whole bunch of family. So, you know, it's not like having that support system, man. I don't care. How old or grown you think you are, man? I, I like seeing my parents in the stands, my first cousins, my aunts, my ne nephews, nieces. I like seeing them in the stands, man, and put a little extra battery in my back. So, hey. how many tickets are you? Well, that's that's yeah. yeah. and yeah. I was about to say, how, how many tickets are you having to buy? Yeah, how how, how yeah. often are you pissing oh, Frank yeah. off every week? Hey, man, hey, there's a lot of tickets, but uh, you know, Frank and Kevin so. are going. Uh, guys here again. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, players yeah. don't get free. There's a, yeah, that's a, not a free. players don't get a bunch of free. You get like two, two or two. Yeah, two. They, they not free. They they comp. So right. you know, it's, it's on a cheaper uh, rate. And, and you get taxed on them yeah, by the way. Get, yeah. You get taxed yeah. on them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. I, you know, I, I do it for my intermediate family. You know, uh, little distant cousins and stuff like that. They gotta gotta figure it out on their own. But yeah. Uh, yeah. my intermediate family, <laughs> I'm gonna hold them down for sure. Yeah. So so what is the best part about being home? Is it the home cooking? Like you know, oh, like man, my, yeah, mom yeah. coming down my and mom, taking my care mom of you. Sisters, man, they throw down all the time. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving <laughs> this year was great, man. I feel like I ain't had that. You know, since I was a kid, so it's definitely great to be back, man. Well, I will say, Kaiser and I are, are bonded early in the season, and I kept asking him, "Can you come on the show? Can you come on the show? Can you come on the show?" And he was living at home until I don't even know a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a couple of weeks. So ago, you were yeah. literally driving from every day, man. Tired, coming up and down that highway. We even so. offered to get you a suite down here to get <laughs> yeah, you to know, stay. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's nuts. See, what time would you leave the house from from a country or wherever? Uh, if we Eastern. starting at eight, I'm leaving at six. Starting at 9, I'm going to leave, you know, about 6.40. Yeah, just so I could try to beat the traffic. And then getting home at what time? 7.30, 8 yeah, o'clock? late, late, man. Do trying you... to watch some films, All right, spend so time wait, with my daughter, and go to sleep. I got a question for you now. How much do you think that taxed your play? Because that, I mean, that's that's some serious, serious uh, dedication to I feel like I would just uh, try to make up, you know, sleeping on Fridays or Saturdays. You know, just try to make it up. I feel like I, I was good, but you know, it was uh getting to me a little bit, it was wearing me out for sure. It, it has to, you yeah. know, not necessarily physically, but mentally, yeah, it's it was, gotta it be was a train. Out, yeah. That turnpike is a you know, yeah, man, yeah I mean, tough. they got the three Ugh. lanes open for most of the way now, yeah. but still, it was tough, man. Yeah, and I, but I just didn't want to rush and be in a bad area and you know, Philly or anything like that, so I just wanted to take my time with finding this place. And it's not like you come to work and sit at a desk, yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you do a physical job, for sure. and not only do you do a physical job. But you actually have somebody across from you trying to keep you from doing sure. your job every, yeah. every day for sure. in a physical way. So, yeah, sure. it's, it's very taxing. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I think all of us in the panel could say we, we didn't see that. Uh, you know, like, it, like, like that it was affecting your play, man, because yeah, like, yeah. you, you, and, you and TJ tearing it up in the middle. You, what's, what's that rapport like between the two of you guys? Uh, you know, like to have that because, you know, there's two linebackers on the field. They like to play in, in the nickel For exclusively sure. mm -hmm. um, and here you know, with, our, with our defensive structure with Jonathan Gannon. Uh, but you and TJ. Yeah, like what kind of what kind of report do you guys have both on the field and off the field? Well, we have a great report. You know, since I got here, you know, TJ just been showing me uh, love. To me, it's crazy that he don't get the respect. You know, he deserves. In my uh, opinion. Um, he's he's starting to get it. He yeah. does. He does here. He yeah, does yeah. Here. But I'm saying, like globally, I right. feel like a lot of people. Like I, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't know who he was until we played the Eagles last year. He was making every play out there. I'm like, who the heck is 57? <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's just so crazy. People don't really know about him too much. Even, you know, I talked to some of my buddies on the Chargers. They're not really too familiar with him. You know, I'll tell them, like, yo, you got to check him out. He, he's official. But, uh, yeah, we have a great rapport. TJ, highly intelligent uh, player, uh, hard worker, you know, undrafted guy. So, you know, I just 
I'm rooting for him. I want the best one for sure. Kaiser, Love, real. He's been a real. guest on our show the last couple of years. Yeah. Honestly, we're, yeah, we're, we're big fans. The only, the only reason why he's not going to be on this year is because he's doing another show with Gerald Colton. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, at yeah, Chickies I was going to allude to okay. that. He does one uh, every Monday night, and they were talking last night. Is TJ Edwards a top five ping pong player on the team? <laughs> We'd be going back and forth. Uh, he says he's number four. Where does he put Kaiser? They ain't going to put me in five. They be hating on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he's he a top five player for all sure. All right, yeah, all right, yeah. cool. <laughs> Everybody, yeah. don't hang out alone in the man cave for football this season. Try hanging out at Cheerleaders with sexy entertainers, $4 domestic beers, Jameson specials, and awesome game day prizes. Guys, here, we didn't warn you that as soon as they know we go to break, you're in trouble. So, <laughs> here they come. That's right. Stop in before, during, or after the game, not only to see your favorite entertainers, but also your chance to win an awesome game day prize the most epic game day experience is at cheerleaders gentlemen's club where champions play cheerleaders is open daily from noon until 2 a.m everybody this is the green legion radio players show from live casino here in south philadelphia we'll be back right after this Clear. Free Barbera's big finish events on bumper to bumper total clearance. Okay. Please, for the love of God, especially that commercial. Okay. Don't yell at me. What's up, man? How you doing? You're killing me, Smalls. Boy, I guess. What did you say was up there? Uh, Calcaterra was a top five. Jake Elliott. They had Jake Elliott, but Jake Elliott's really oh, good. He said was Isaac Ciamalo was yeah, number one. Yeah. number one. TJ had himself at four. And I forget who number five was. Slay was saying that he was the best on the team, but then, like, you saw the, kind of his form when he was, like, doing an air swing with the, with the ping pong pal. <laughs> I was like, but yeah, he, he he's not the best on the team. <laughs> Speaking of holidays, man, you could be in Dallas on Christmas Eve. Yeah, man, I think my parents are going to fly out there, too. Your parents are flying out? Yeah, my dad a Cowboys, man. So when your dad is? My wife's a Cowboys fan. Crazy. I can't stand it. So are you going to do Christmas with with your daughter? Yeah, the next day. The next day? So when you get back, you'll be back on Christmas, but you can do it later in the day. You don't have to do it Christmas morning. I have a talk with your dad. I know, man. You know, he'll have fan of me first, but. Well, yeah. I'm in the other room. I was playing the game. How much time do we have? 2.30. 2.30. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, who you, who you right. Thanks. Does he wear Dallas gear? Yeah, he's married to a Dallas fan. Don't yeah, let him fool you. He's been to Dallas my whole life. Good, man. How you doing? Oh, yeah? That's why I went to uh, Jersey College. Lackawanna, yeah. If we whoop that ass on Christmas Eve, you can walk up to your dad to the game. How about them Cowboys? Yeah, man, I'm sir. telling you, yes, sir. Let's I know, go. I know he was a little salty when we beat him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. Let's keep adding that salt. I'm telling you. <laughs> no problem, man. Appreciate it. Happy holidays. Time. Yeah, how you, how about the yep. Less than two minutes. Time. Probably about a minute and a half. Minute 35. Minute 35. Thank you. Hey, where'd you get that hoodie at? One minute. Six seconds. All for you. No, I, I played my first nine with uh, New England. And then I went. Sam, Damn. we got a minute. Less than. Yeah. 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 Dang, so I said my first nine with New England. Then I went with three with Miami. Then three years with Philadelphia. My last two with Washington. I said, How your body feel now? I'm good. I'm good, man. I wanna, I wanna get 15 under my belt, man. 30. You already understand. Be the hammer, not the nail. Got 30. Initiate contact. Be sharp.
15, stand by. With your personal attorney choice, Top Dog Law gets the job done. Get top dollar for your accident at topdoglaw.com. Once again, topdoglaw.com. The Gambler, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Yep. All right, everybody. Green Legion Radio Player Show on Fox Sports The Gambler, 102.5 FM, Philadelphia. My name's Quimby. Joined alongside my host, Sackmaster Dave Spadaro, host of your Philadelphia Eagles Insider Podcast. Legendary wide receiver, the Reverend, the Dr. Irving Fryer, and Philadelphia Eagles linebacker number 43, Kaiser White, everybody. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Appreciate y'all, awesome. man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, before we went to break, we were on what specific? We were all over the place. We didn't, yeah. get in, we didn't even get into his career at, at, at West Virginia. We didn't get into the transition from safety to linebacker. We didn't get into being drafted. Hold on a we second. Hold on. Slow down. The Chargers. Slow Let's down. go. Guys here. Answer any of those in any order you like, sir. <laughs> Ready to go. Uh, uh, talk about West Virginia, please. Uh, you know, West Virginia, I was, like you said, uh, Dave said, I was playing, uh, you know, safety there. I was probably, you know, 210, soaking wet. Um, <laughs> and it's crazy because uh, when I, I was looking at going to Penn State, what they kind of, Penn State and USC, they kind of kept on. You Hold know, on a second. Let's just make sure we know what somebody on this panel or how they feel about Penn State. I agree. Who don't like Penn State up there? You don't? I hate nah. Penn State. Why? What's, what's wrong with Penn I'm State? I'm a Temple guy. I'm a Temple guy. No, no, oh, none of them like, can't stand none of Penn, like State. Penn State. I couldn't okay. stand Penn State yeah, before yeah, Sandusky. Yeah. got worse after Sandusky. And Daniel I'll tell you right now, Franklin doing a good job. Uh, and I'll tell you right now, I, I, would, I would take you over Micah Parsons all day long <laughs> because he's a Cowboys fan. You're respect, a fraud. I respect you. You should have never played in Pennsylvania. Get out. Can I also just real quick before you continue to elaborate? Quimby does have a history of loving Eagles linebackers that were transformed from being a safety. safety. Nate Gary, he was a huge fan of his a few years ago. Oh, yeah. Bro, total bromance in 2019. Yeah. Loved him. Okay. I'm not afraid to admit that, sir. <laughs> okay. Real one, man. But, yeah, like I, like I was saying, uh, Penn State and USC, they kept, uh, you know, throwing. I felt like they were trying to move me more towards, you know, playing linebacker. They kept talking, you know, Sue Crazy and stuff like that. So that kind of strayed me away. West Virginia was letting me play safety. So, you know, that's why I really wanted to go there as well. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm surprised I'm a linebacker now. I never never thought I'd be a linebacker. You're a big son of a bitch, man. Yeah, I don't I, see I, you I've playing been, safety. I've, I've been little my whole life. I've always been little. Smallest guy on the team my whole life. until. I don't like, think you're small at all. Yeah, now I, I'm a late bloomer, but my whole life, even going into high school, uh, my junior year is when I started growing. Same thing that happened with my dad. He went to college like five, seven did a year, came back 6'3". Found, found that uh, ice wow. cream in the cafeteria. Yeah, was man, free. I'm, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's, what, it's what everybody would love to do, though, because you're getting bigger, stronger, and then still being fast. Like, what is the secret to that? Because we all think, well, when we gain weight, we're going to get slower. Yes, that's what I thought, too. I, I was scared to gain weight. I thought I was going to slow down. But I actually feel faster than I did at West Virginia and more explosive. So uh, What's you know, the I, secret? I need to know. Man, just keep working. Never get complacent. You yeah, know, but just, did you but, also go on the Quimby diet? <laughs> nah, I ain't going no I ain't really going on no diet. Man. <laughs> Hold on a second. Just tell him to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 muscle. Yeah. It's it's that training that you do in the weight room. Yeah. Explosive training, but I guess. Explosive training. I, I was running a lot but, of hills with my brothers as well. Right, but thought. it's also flexibility. For sure. Flexibility will make you faster. For sure. Yes. Sure. I'm I'm ready to race you at any point. Oh, I'll, I'll whoop. Oh my still gosh. got it. Still got it. Yeah, I we can, could do I this. Be his ass. Yeah, yeah we yeah. could do this. You think? out in front of oh, the casino. Yeah. I, I bet, I bet you I... do, but I bet you don't by much. Let me place what? a wager, man. I bet that's it. Hold on, hold How on. How far do you want to run? Absolute fantasy. I said on a Quimby sprint. Side. How far do you want to run? I know. Is that forty yard dash? Forty. I I bet Quimby doesn't even get twenty. Whenever you're ready, Quimby. Yo, this this is a must. Wait, are you saying you can? Compete? No, okay. I can compete. I can't beat. I can compete. He can get off the starting line if that's competing. <laughs> how, how close you give yourself, man? <laughs> Quimby, how close? Well, I'm not, five. I'm, five. I'm not. I'm not going to run. I'm only going to run fast enough to beat it. Wait a minute, hold on. I'm so if Irv runs a five, you can run a five five. Yep. Hundred <laughs> percent. I'm just going to run fast enough to beat. Hold it. on that's a second. Hold on. Simple. Hold on. When I get down to the weight, I want to get down to. Which, by the way, Kaiser, I've been dieting a little yeah. bit. What's, I had. What's I your diet consist of? 
starving myself and yeah. uh, lots of cardio. Uh, but I lost 45 in the last four months. Oh, congrats on that, man. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, I was. A, How much more you want to lose? 30. 30 more? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Just like just like when we got on the golf course and you got your butt whooped. Ooh. It'll it'll oh. happen again. Oh, I am man. so happy our relationship is oh. going to last for quite some time. <laughs> wow. I am happy to figure oh, out a way man. to whoop your ass in as many that's things that's, as possible. That's not going to happen, Quimby. It's oh, not going to happen. Anyway, ask, golf for, hold on. I'm I've, been, I've been playing golf for a little while. Yeah, I'm yes. trying to learn. Ir- Irv, to years. Irv is a pressure golfer. Yeah, he's an athlete. You know what? He doesn't have. I get the distracted. most consistent stroke. But you piss him off or put him in a pressure situation. He's gonna turn up. Oh him. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately. Yeah. It's used hey, to that. You, you do that to your friends on the golf course, and you can usually heckle the hell out of For them. For sure. No, no, you just make me better. Uh, Herb just gets pissed. <laughs> so, That's uh, funny, man. So uh when was the transition from safety to linebacker? Uh when the Chargers drafted me, uh I remember I was on the phone with the GM and they were like, you know, we want you to come play linebacker for us. And you know, it was some you know, I, I kept hearing it like, yeah, you might play linebacker, but I know some teams wanted me to play strong safety as well. So when they said that, my, you know, my heart kind of chopped a little bit like, dang, man, I got to really play linebacker. I know I'm going to be going against these 300 plus dudes and I ain't really used to playing in the box. I was going to ask, is yeah, that what so, the resistance yeah, was? I was like, man, I don't know. Like, I like being on a roof and coming down, flying in the open, filling the gap. You know what I mean? Like playing close. I feel like it would be hard to even, you know, get a hard hit like I want because I don't got enough, you know, space to you know right. build up my speed and stuff like that but uh you know i'm actually glad uh i'm playing linebacker i feel like i'll be a better linebacker than i than i would at safety i'm more it, it's a new athletic. breed of linebacker yeah, right. for sure. it's, it's covering in space and it's filling against the run for sure i mean i i think linebackers you tell me are the most versatile players on the field i believe that as well in today's game so yeah, in today's so, game. Yeah. so wait a second i don't second. feel like i'll be a, a, i'll be a linebacker when you play right uh, right like I, yeah. i'm not that body type i'm not just a uh uh, purely run stuff, or you know what I mean? Neck roll so, type yeah, guy. More of Stop a, but, but hold on, hold on, everybody, real fast, because I got to ask this question. What you're saying is the linebackers are the best athletes on the field. Yeah, I think, and one another one. reason why I wanted to on address de- that before on the defensive side the of the ball, side. one of them for sure. <laughs> no, no, the the athletes on defense are better than the athletes on offense in the NFL. That's why they change the rules all the time to cater to the offense. Well, Otherwise, they, they're defense, getting stronger, faster. They need points. Well, they have to be on defense because they have to be able to react. recover. Defend. We got to yeah. react. And yeah. react, yes. Corners, backpedaling. Right. They got to open up a run. Yeah, it's yes. tough. What's yes. your best sport, Kaiser, not, not including football? I think we just talked about uh, it. Ping pong, right? No, he's not top boxing. <laughs> boxing. Boxing. Yeah. boxing. Boxing. Or, yeah, or basketball. You, you or boxing do have a reach. Yeah. I, I, I've been boxing for probably since I got to the NFL. Probably you've been yeah, boxing since you were a kid, man. You had six older I, siblings. I, I used to wrestle. I used to. I used to wrestle too. But yeah, I'll say boxing, man. Boxing and basketball. That's awesome. Yeah. All the footwork. Yeah, for sure. I so, like to do so, that also. so in boxing, did you compete in boxing? And- nah, um, I, I just picked it up when I. I it's crazy because boxing is like my favorite sport outside of basketball. Mm-hmm. My dad, when we was growing up, yeah, we would watch football, but he really, he really had us uh, watching boxing with him. He was a big boxing fan. You know, we used to watch Floyd. Boxing always, but you know, we wanted to do it when we was young, but my mom was not having it. So, you know, when I got <laughs> wouldn't sign that permission and, slip. Uh, me and my brothers, we got older, and uh, me and my brother Kev, when we out in uh, Cali and stuff, he lives out there. We box. We uh, go to Freddie Roach's gym, uh, wild card boxing out in L.A., and uh, we go to American Gym out in uh, Orange County, and you know, we there four or five days out the week, just grinding. Like I lift weights in the off season and do a lot of calisthenics, but I'm also in, my cardio is that boxing gym. Mama don't want nobody hitting yeah, on her nah, baby. man. Me and, me and my nah, brother be sparring a little bit. She'll, 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 she'll get mad at us <laughs> yeah. and everything. So, yeah, man, I, w- I wish I could have boxed at a young age because, I, you know, I love the sport. But, you know, I'm glad I'm right where I'm at. Because you said that you had resistance when, like, when you were on the phone with the general manager of the Chargers yeah. and he was saying, like, hey, we're going to make you a linebacker. Yeah. How quickly did you change that mindset? Like, was it, was it like, you know, early on, like when you got into, you I mean, know, I, the rookie I, mini I, camp I, or I did, I did it take no, a hit? Yeah, I know I had no choice, and I'm always up for a challenge. And, uh, you know, uh, Gus Bradley, he was my D coordinator, and, uh, you know, he, he kept saying, man, you remind me of Telvin Smith, Telvin Smith. So, uh, you know, I, I started looking up Telvin Smith and seeing some of the things he was doing out on the field, and, you know, I started getting excited about it. Like, I feel like I could do some of those same things. And, uh, you know, when I was watching this film, 
you know, he looked on the smaller side to me. So I, I feel like we had similar body types and stuff like that. So, you know, I got excited for sure. Yeah. And, and looking at that 2018 Chargers, Ross, you guys had a stacked defense. Stacked defense. Yeah. yeah so who, who was, I know you talk about Telvin Smith, who was the guy on, on the squad that was, you know, helping you the most transition? Oh, uh, Denzel Perriman, for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, they, man, great guy. Uh, you know, he, he took me under his wing. Um, you know what I mean? Any any type of help I needed, he was there to help me out. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, Talvin Smith. And then uh, Talvin Smith, Denzel Perriman. <laughs> and uh, my my guy, Uchenna Nuoso, who we drafted to play mm -hmm. linebacker. Then they, they pushed him to edge. Uh, but, yeah, he helped me out a lot. How do you look at your years with the Chargers? Um, I mean, you led the team in tackles last year. Yeah. Uh, the team never really took that next step as a team. You know, you lived in. LA. They were all worried about Philip Rivers and not being able to pull out of a driveway. <laughs> <laughs> you just waiting for that. You just I was that opportunity. I was right. waiting. I was I waiting. He got it tucked yeah. away. Man. Yeah, he was just waiting. <laughs> well, apparently Philip doesn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, it, they they gave you a chance in the NFL, so you have great great gratitude for that. Um, mm -hmm. How do you look at it though, Kaiser? Because they didn't they didn't keep you around for this year. Hey uh, man, I. I got nothing but good things to say about the Chargers. You know, they changed me and my family's life. They gave me a chance, you know, to get the foot in the door. Uh, you know, business is business. Um, you know, Three just, years in L.A.? Yeah, four. I mean, I looked in the mirror and just big. said, uh, you know, get better. So, you know, the next team you want, maybe you can stay there. But uh, I feel like last year I had a real dominant and great year. But, you know, everything happened for a reason. I'm on a level one Eagles right now. I'm back home. Uh, you know, hometown team. Uh, my family's here. I went in. You know what I mean? I can't complain. Around. God don't make no mistakes, man. So, you know. That's how I look at it. I would I would imagine, you know, I'm NFL, still a fan of the Chargers, though, too. Like NFL players. Uh, we play, we'll I, play them real soon, and you're going to have to change that tone, oh, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, though, I'm a, for sure a diehard, you know, Eagles first. But, yeah, I still want the Chargers to do well. I, I would imagine, you know, it was a very eye-opening experience for you to get drafted and to go, okay, we need to sign your contract. You're like, wow, man, this is great money. And then you get your check, and you're like, Wow, LA taxes, or California man. taxes. Oh, <laughs> oh man, like even even my player performance I just got a few weeks ago, man, like they took more than half my money. I'm like, yeah, I'm so glad I'm up out of LA, I'll tell you that. That's why Trey Turner picked the Phillies over the Padres. Man, right, smart, right, right, smart California boy. state tax, baby. Not, smart not a, a smart man. <laughs> smart man. Smart man. Terrible, man. 836 <laughs> for sack to mention Trey Turner. What's that? 836 for uh Sacked if we're being, I took him, it took him 36 minutes yeah, to bring Trey. Yeah. We're being honest, it would have been 36 seconds into the show if Quimby would have allowed me. To, to I just don't know if I'm an agent. I'm, <laughs> I, if I, every agent should be obligated to explain to players this is what happens when you get a job, yeah. you get taxed, and I feel well, like they don't do it. Imagine what it's like when Canada's dollar absolutely sucks, and you got to go play in Toronto or uh, at, for the Raptors or right. the Blue Jays, right? Or or the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, which is also the name of a prophylactic you can buy in most gas stations. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, so uh, welcome to Green Legion Radio. <laughs> Give me the list of women you've been with because I got to call them and let them know. Let's change. Get them change the subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, how quickly and how easily, how fluid was for you to fit into your role here in John Gannon's defense? Oh, um, I feel like John Gannon's defense is similar to the defense that I just came from. Uh, him and Brandon, Brandon Staley are, you know, real tight, right. uh, close friends. So I, I feel like there's a lot of similarities, some small differences, but I feel like I picked it up quick. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, Kaiser fit right into it. Um, first game of the year, deflected the pass. James Bradbury intercepts it, touchdown. Well, we'll talk about the Eagles defense in just a minute. You know bit. what? I'm going to tell you right now, my favorite moment of you mm -hmm. as an Eagle so far mm -hmm. was how pissed off you were in the first play against the Jets preseason game, oh, yeah. after they tried to, uh, after Quinn tried to uh, knock Jalen Hurts yeah, out of yeah, uh, yeah. out of his uh, out of his world, yeah, you came out that first drive and you were all over oh, yeah, the for field. Sure. I for went, sure. I went, my God, thank you yeah. that we have a linebacker on this team again. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. You, it man. No, seriously, guys here, and I didn't stop talking about it. I've been waiting for an opportunity to bring that up. Immediately, I immediately you, enjoyed you, man. Thank you, man. Seriously. I appreciate you. Man. Who was Thank more you. mad, you, Jordan Mailata, or Nick Sirianni? <laughs> I don't know. We were all pissed off, man. Like, it's preseason trying to kill our quarterback. Exactly. <laughs> that. And, and you see, eleven and one, yeah. MVP of the league as of right sure. now. Did you Killing. think? Did you think Jalen was as good as he is when you played against the Eagles last year? No. Yeah. To be honest, nah. Like when I came here and seen yeah. it, 
you know, I'm like, uh, dang, like this is a different Jalen Hurt. Last year, don't get me wrong, I thought he was a good player for sure. You know, could run. Uh, you know, we played, a, we had a close game with the Eagles last year, but what I'm seeing this year is like, wow. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Same with us. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah everybody. Else you knew he could grow, but you didn't know it. And yeah, I didn't. You wanted, know he you wanted as, him to. Prove I didn't, it. I didn't yeah. know he was as good as he, yeah. he, he was at that time last year. I didn't really know him. Then I see how he worked and everything like that. And great, 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 great quarterback, man. Having a MVP year, I think he's a front runner for the MVP for sure. Great, great quarterback. Well, when you guys win the Super Bowl, we'll have that argument. So up, one game at a time for sure. Upcoming entertainment here. Don't listen to that, guys. Here, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Upcoming entertainment here at Live. Well, I'm going to tell you a lot of things here. I projected 14 and three, and I know, three. I know, the three games that we're going to win. And what we're going to give up, but we'll talk about that when Kaiser leaves. Upcoming entertainment <laughs> here at Live Casino in South Philly. That's live. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jefferson Starship, Friday, this Friday, December 9th. Matt Frazier, Saturday, December 10th. And Sunday, December 11th. Soul Town Motown Holiday Show, Sunday, December 18th. Herb. Party with Dorinda on New Year's Eve, Saturday, December 31st. Dorinda Medley from the Real Housewives of New York City. The Best of the Eagles, Friday, January 20th. The Eagles Tribute Band. Bobby Collins, Saturday, February 18th. And right now I'm looking for livecasino.com. I think that's the website, right? I forget. Probably. <laughs> that's the best live read you've ever yeah, had. That's, right? yeah. that's pretty Yeah, livecasinophilly.com. Livecasinophilly.com. Everybody, this is Green Legion Radio's <laughs> player show. He's Quimby. That's Quimby. I'm unfortunately your host for the evening. We're on Fox Sports The Gambler, 102.5 FM Philadelphia. Back with our final segment with Eagles linebacker Kaiser White. Yeah. Right after this. I will smooth read, Quimby. Go to hell, Jansen. <laughs> yeah, that was that was Quimby's Bob Euchre major league move. <laughs> uh, the hell, no one's listening anyway. The hell with yeah. it. <laughs> How long is this? Uh, you got three forty-five. Nine. Do you have any teeth oil? Uh, we just at the beginning of the year we had half of our teeth removed. That's right. I knew it's something. Where's that at? Did he kiss yeah, you? my dog just got 16 teeth left. Oh, what's going on, man? How you doing? Oh yeah. You went to boxing? Hold your dog. Yeah. Right, let me ask you this question. Yeah, I mean it happens, man. Like that. She said more than ten but I guess once the swallow goes down, I read like. I like Once it heals, it's still good to go. So, that's crazy, man. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, we just, dude, we just yeah, dropped twenty three hundred dollars on to get the bladder stones removed. We dropped thousand to get an X-ray on a fucking hip. Dude, our, our next, our next animals, we're, 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 we're fucking getting animal insurance. Right, right off cuff. It's not that bad. Look, look, what my sister pays for, like, you know, my, her dogs. Yeah. It's not, dude. Like, not really. oh, man, we get bent over. Dude, just like all it takes is one huge. I mean, what? Seriously, if you're spending, I wanted like Mickey bucks a Mickey month, stay there. As compared to spending yeah, twenty three hundred dollars, you know, they just be juggling around so much, you just can't seem to get. get well, that's because you got bad. Bad. You're getting wow. it later in the dog's wow. life. I didn't. Oh yeah. If you, if you do it like yeah, a puppy or a kitten, yeah, you're right. That kid stays that way throughout the course of their life. It doesn't change like. You like that movie out there, man? For America, man. For him? Yeah. 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 For I mean, Who wouldn't do that? Somebody offers you more money? Yeah. Elevate your position? Sure. No. Take care of yourself. Take care of your people. Um, I'm, I just, you know, I hope the people at Jacksonville, at Jackson, and in... Uh, What's up, man? How you doing? Division, I hope they continue to run with the ball. They got to continue to run with the ball. He showed them what to do and what they could have. Right. What's going on? How are you? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I saw, I, I follow him on uh, Instagram. I'll be there. Yeah, there was one time. I'll be there. I keep Somebody on saying, the Eagles got to win the Super Bowl. So that way, the week they win the Super Bowl, spring training starts. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they do play, they do play hard. I got to give them credit. Like, yeah, Torts, Torts, Torts gets them to play hard. 
was watching his team. Uh, but it's not like he, Phillies he, he, and World Series, on Eagles on the road to the Super Bowl. I'm, I'm, it's not that. Oh, the, the other day, yeah, see, I'm, I'm coming. I just want y'all to know I'm coming. That game against the Lightning, that second period was when, I, when I'm coming, it's going to be changed. Yeah, man. Y'all that. No, the Thursday night game. They, 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 played, they played the devil's stuff. Bring my son with me. He's the quarterback. The mother yeah, son yeah. Is the I was at the game last Tuesday when they, when they, when they played him. Two fights in the first eight seconds. I was like, yes. But I had my six-year-old with me. I'm like, this is old school hockey. Let's go. I'm good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking what he's doing. It's not what it used to be. It's just like, 30 seconds. Football's not what football used to be. You know? I think he will. I think he will, yeah. I, will. I mean, because he's going to get all the top guys. Right. If I'm a cornerback, I'm going to I guess I'm going to have to take the bull by the way. All right, I think we can get some volume back up here. Right, here comes Quinn. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Liberty, 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 Liberty. The Gambler, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. You're up. Yeah, that was a good one. Out of breath, you got to You're going to beat me running? And you out of breath running? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. oh, running across the stage? For real, Quimby? <laughs> oh. Oh. Green Legion Radio Players Show here on Fox Sports, The Gambler 102.5 oh. FM Philadelphia. An Irving free segment coming up, everybody. <laughs> you guys, we are with Kazir, Kaiser White. It's Kaiser, right? Not yep. Kazir, Kaiser. Kaiser, yep. Guys, you're white. Get it right, man. That's a Philadelphia tough guy. Eagles line. I'm not right there. I, know I am guy, not man. messing with him at all. <laughs> I know tough guy. <laughs> he likes boxing. He plays linebacker. Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles linebacker. One of the uh, – seriously, I'm just so happy to have you here in the city. Thank you, man. No, I mean, you're part of the equation that has given us 11-1. and one, mm-hmm. Right? And you're a big part of it because it was a position that the Eagles denied for a very long time. We don't need it. We need to worry about the trenches in our quarterback. And they didn't realize that the linebacker is responsible for anybody that gets past the line. Mm -hmm. That's the name. Mm -hmm. Football 101 by Quimby. Just saying. Did you know that, Kaiser? (laughs) Quimby also uh, gets scared when he sees Dallas Goddard with the football. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, he's he's so uh, scared. Let me, do, do you meet, do you meet people, Let me know when you guys are done. Do you meet people, Kaiser, who like, hey, what do you do for a living? And you go, I play professional football. And they, they, they're like, well, what do you do? And I, you go, I'm a linebacker. And they say, what is that? Yeah, all the time. Really? Yeah. yeah. He dials up Quimby. Do you walk the, the other way when they say that? <laughs> no, nah, man, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Kaiser, we talked about West Virginia. We talked about the Chargers. Talk mm-hmm. about the difference in the locker room right now between – the Chargers, and the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to know your take on that. I feel like the culture, uh, you know, at the Chargers was real good. But uh, with the Eagles, it's just something different, man. I feel like, you know, it's a real brotherhood. Uh, You know, we in there playing ping pong for hours, you know, after practice is over, um, pool. You know what I mean? It's a real brotherhood, man. Everybody enjoys each other's company in there. And, uh, you know, everybody wants the best for each other, man. I feel like it ain't really no – Eagles in there, man. We all just bought in, you know, and trying to trying to win this thing. So, what is it like? Uh, and you can explain to all these guys. Nick Sirianni really, I think, tries to create a. Like, what do you? What did? What was your first thought on him? And 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 why do you think his way works? And and I'm not talking about X's and O's or. Game day. I'm talking about in in Novacare and just mm-hmm. having just everybody like, connect. I feel like he's just uh, genuine, man, and I feel like you can feel that. I feel like uh, players, as players, you can feel when a coach is kind of blowing smoke. And uh, with Nick Sirianni, you know he gonna shoot it straight, and you just know he a genuine guy and, and truly wants the best for everyone. And uh, you know he he's not afraid when he messes up to take take blame and uh, put it on himself. You know he don't. It's not like he's pointing fingers. You know he he holds himself accountable. So. Uh, you know, I feel like as players, we really appreciate that, man. It makes you want to go harder for a coach like that. Now, Zach Ertz had said previously that uh, you know, Coach Sirianni, he'll put your number up on the screen. Like when he does, like when he 
does like film review on that Monday. Does he ever do that with the coaching staff too? Like, yeah, does, he, does, does he put up there like Coach Nick, you know, Coach Steichen? Yeah, literally everybody. Coach everybody is held accountable. If you mess up, he's he gonna let you know, and uh, he's gonna do it in front of everybody. Even he does it with himself as well. So uh, you know, that's a great feeling. Like, you know, you have been a, a part of teams where it's like coaches just want might want to put the blame on all the players. They don't see that they do nothing wrong. So it's like seeing the coach like, yeah, man, I'm messing up here. I should have, I should have called this, done that. It's like. Dang, it's a real coach, right? Here. We did an interview prior to the season in the locker room at the at Lincoln Financial Field, and I made a mistake, like talking about the time clock. And hey, coach, you know you have forty seconds to call a play and get everything. And he goes, he called me out in the middle of it. Hey, Dave, uh, it's thirty five seconds. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, Jeez, man, this guy is on top yeah, of it. Yeah, but on. I appreciate that. That's Can't that's slip. the only way to make you better. Yeah, is to make sure that everybody is held accountable. Because once you let the little details slip, it all slips. It all slips, yeah. Speaking of little details, speaking of Sirianni holding himself accountable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Courtney, I'm going to get you. Parking lot. <laughs> five minutes. minutes. I throw the gloves on, man. Yeah, he, I'm, a, I'm not putting the gloves on. I'm going bare knuckle, bro. Because he just got him out in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the special teams was something that needed to be adjusted mm -hmm. what was the difference this week what was going over what was changed what, um, was, what was said i feel like uh i feel like anybody is just gonna play better when you're playing free i feel like when you got so much pressure dang i gotta make a play i gotta right. make a play right you end up not making a play you, you're trying to force something that right. you should just let come organically so i feel like the message this week was just go out there and be you man y'all all here for a reason just don't put no extra stress on yourself you know what I mean? People might be trying to attack y'all on social media, man. They they can't do what we do. So it's like just block out that noise and uh, you know, just be you. We we all here for a reason. So let's just go out there and make plays. It worked. It yeah, worked for sure, man. Yeah. It was definitely a sight to see. Couple Back things. Up. I'm sorry, a couple things. The, the NFC East, we always think that it's like this rough and tough and really glamorized the the rivalries between the Eagles and Washington and Dallas and the Giants. You've seen Washington twice, you've seen Dallas once. Now we start in with the Giants. Do you feel the NFC East is special? For sure. Uh, you know, growing up, this is all I watched. Really, uh, you we're know, not, we're not talking up. short bus special. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Nah, yeah, I think I, I, I think this is a great, uh, you know, conference Jeez. to be in. Uh, you know, it, it got the biggest uh, fan base in uh, all the NFL, so I feel like it's a lot of great players in here, and uh, you know, I, I feel like it's a great conference to be in. I, I have to get this message across real quick, guys. Here, because uh, before we went to break, I said. My prediction, we're going to get into this a little heavier after you get out of here. You don't 14, 14 and 3? 14 Come and 3. On. I you said it. You don't think we can I run the it. table? No, I, I, I don't want you to. Okay. All right, because I want there to be a no absolute need to win victory against the Giants this in the last game good. of the season. He did this before the Commanders Shut game. up. He did this he before the Commanders game. Yes. I don't know. Oh, no, but, man. but, no such thing as but no this thing. has nothing to do with that right now. I'm not talking predictions. I'm going to mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about that after you leave. I have. Two things real fast that I want to throw past you because we're almost out of time. First on Nick Sirianni, if he didn't endear himself after that Quinn hit in the preseason game, that is Philadelphia right there. And you knew right there that he was a player's coach yeah, sure. and he had your back. When he when he's knocking out Salu from the other sideline, what the are For you sure. Doing, yeah, and and, and you know, he screaming, got our yeah, yeah sure. absolutely, sure. absolutely. All right, I got Dave, I, no, no, no. I have one other right. before Dave uh, takes this uh, to break, mm -hmm. and and we say, hey, good luck, at the Giants. We'll see you in section three thirty one. Yeah, okay. and I know you know where those seats are because a couple of your family members for have sure. them there. For sure. Uh, <laughs> I want to say right now, the most important game of this season, regular season, is this Sunday. For sure. All right, because you can't you no, you can't lose to the Giants twice, and I think the game at the end of the season should mean nothing. I think you and the rest of the starters should be sitting on the sidelines having a good old time, mm -hmm. or up in the box. <laughs> I'm just telling you, earmuffs, <laughs> earmuffs. I don't know, but uh, and I want you to uh, I want you to give Hassan Reddick a, a, a message from me. What's that? Tell him to pick it up a little. All right, because he was the only defensive lineman that had a sack. That didn't also have a tackle for a loss. Wow. wow, my gosh! Hey, I got a question. All right, a real wow. question. It's a joke. <laughs> a real question. He's joking. Real question. So, so I think it's an interesting matchup against the Giants. 
their quarterback runs a lot. Daniel Jones, a lot of design stuff, a lot of bootlegs. They've got Saquon. You know, you're going to be really involved in making sure you're disciplined and keeping Jones from running. You have 12 carries, 71 yards against Washington. What is what, what do you see? I mean, I know you're not really studying them yet, but discipline wise, like what does it take for you to make sure that you don't bite on that, that you stay at home, that you're really kind of concentrating? Yeah, I mean, I feel like Daniel Jones is uh, sneaky athletic. You know what I very mean? Very athletic. Yeah, yeah, he's very athletic. And uh, besides tripling over the uh, 18 yard line, yeah, that was crazy. But uh, <laughs> you know, man, he got, he he got he got real good speed. So I feel like you can't you know overlook him. You know, he might not be Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray when it comes to speed, but he could run, man. Definitely. Hey, are you also about. looking forward to going up against the East Penn Conference, Saquon oh, yeah, Barkley? For sure, for sure. I, I played him last year, and uh, you know, it was always love when we see, when we see each other. So yeah, for sure, I, I'm definitely excited about that. Definitely. I mean, he's back. He's back to being Saquon Barkley after two years of injuries. He's oh, yeah, a great sure. player. He's definitely back, man. He's so what's your thing so what's your routine like? So you you didn't practice yesterday. You day off yesterday and today, I guess. Did you go in the facility? Uh, I went in the facility, got some treatment, uh, got some body work, and then you know, watched some film. Are you exactly. feeling okay? Yeah, I'm feeling good. The man. ankle's good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. I mean, let's let's go. Yeah. Um, and then and then when like going up to New York, what do you do the night before a game? Uh, night before a game, man. I like to you know uh, study. You know, do do some extra study, and uh, you know, I, I get on the YouTube and I like watching Floyd Mayweather, and uh, you know, watching my brother's highlights. That's kind of my my routine. I like to do. And then, you know, I read the Bible a little bit, stay prayed up, and, uh, you know, I'm ready to go to work. Have you met Irving Fryer? It's my first time meeting him. Well, you guys are very similar in a few <laughs> regards. It's my first time meeting him, man. Were you reading the Bible before the night before games? That was your – That was your. Oh, for sure. He that's was right. also that's listening that's to that's gospel that's music. It's a dangerous game. That's that, that's that shield you need. I, that I need a covering. Yes, right. I sure. need to be covered. I need yeah, my man. protection. Yeah. So that's what I like to do. Yep. I apologize. The protection I was speaking of before had nothing to do yeah, with the no, Bible. No. Let's, let's, yeah, keep it wholesome. Keep it holy. <laughs> Everybody, we're going to have to take our, our break here before the top of the hour. Oh my God. <laughs> Everybody, Kaiser White. Awesome. Yes. yes. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. Awesome, Thank you, man. I appreciate awesome. it. Thank you. Kaiser, continued health and success. Thank sir. you, man. I appreciate you. We're man. all pulling for you. Thank Cheers, you, man. Thank Cheers, you. I appreciate that. Everybody, Fox Sports The Gambler, 102.5 FM Philadelphia, Green Legion Radio Player Show. You want to take some pictures with Kaiser? Going to be over here in just a second. We're at Live Casino in South Philadelphia. Also with everyone from Xfinity Live. It's a good time here right now. Everybody, come on down, and we'll be back top of the hour with some Eagles, Titans, Breakdown. With Clear. Thanks. How long is this? Uh, it's only three minutes. Yeah, can you add to that? Yeah, can you add to that? Yeah, thanks, man. Great guess. Yeah, great guess. Hold on. Great interview. No, I'm saying it's getting too big. It's getting too big here. Oh, well, we have Xfinity Live holiday party. Yeah, yeah, let's go get the, let's get the photo. Yeah. Get your ass up and
Oh, the car? Oh. <laughs> He's going to be ball hawking. <laughs> Jason, how much time do we have? Probably about a minute. One minute. There you go. One minute. A night out with Mike Diaz. No, thank you. No, I was just saying. Just no, thank you. One minute. No, I get it. Perfect. I get it. I get it. I, I, can, I, I get can it. come close to you in a 40. You get me hosting next week, Jansen. No way in hell. It's good though. I get the holiday week off. I ran the hundred and eleven four in high school. I don't care. You <laughs> forty <laughs> years ago. He's ten years older than me. But what's that guy? How long have you been in high school? Oh, no, yeah. You what went to you, Drexel when you were sixteen. Huh? You're seven. Seven years older. I'm sixty. I don't know how old you are. You're six. Uh, 50, I'll be fifty-two on Thursday. Thursday. Yo, is this their odds on draft? Damn it! Team from the Top Dog Law Studio. Get top dollar for your accident at topdoglaw.com. That's topdoglaw.com. We are 102.5 FM, The Gambler. Yep. All right, everybody. Green Legion Radio Player Show. Lauren Powell joining us now. Yeah, Lauren Powell joining us now. Pow, 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 pow. Everybody, we are broadcasting live from Center Bar here at Live Casino in South Philadelphia. We also have all the hourly employees from Xfinity Live here for their Christmas party, or holiday party, whatever you want to call it. Um, by the way, I was pointed out by one of our uh, our autograph faithful that we forgot to give Kaiser the Green Legion radio bump offer. I'll tell him. Oh, no. no, I, no oh, oh, hold on. Okay. Oh, I went over to Kaiser and said, if you have an interception or a touchdown or anything. In a the, sack. How about a quarterback sack? That's a little. That's a little. Yeah, well, too, ge too generous? It's too generous. Mm -hmm. I want an interception or, uh, or fumble, a touchdown. Fumble force, fumble recovery. Fumble force, fumble recovery. Any one of the. All right. Here we go. That is fumble force. With a fumble recovery, is that fair? Oh, you got to have both. He's got a force. Oh, no, 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 no. It can be recovered by anybody else. Oh, okay, okay. So fumble force, fumble force, and we recover it, and we recover it. Okay, an interception or a touchdown in any capacity. <laughs> and I told him this over at the uh, at the Green Legion step. Repeat the sign. He, he <laughs> I said, hey, what kind of car do you have? He told me. I'm like, well, if any of this happens, you get my car for a week. He goes, what do you have? And I said, souped up CLS 550. He goes, shake on it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think he's going to be uh, challenging the Boston Scott mileage that he put on your old car. I'm all right with that. Because he's going to be going to Mama's house, coming back. Good. I know he lives down here, but he's, he's going to be going up there that I'm week. out of town for two weeks. He might have it for the rest. <laughs> what, what if he recovers and fumble? I, I, I think no? he has to force. I'd rather uh, the force, force fumble. The force. Yeah, I agree you with know the what? force. You know what? I'll, you know, hold on a second. Just a, a force fumble that we recover. Because that's changing the game. Right, right. All right. Down with that. Um, we want to talk about some analysis right now of the Tennessee game. And because you guys are a bunch of pain in my asses. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. A bunch of pains in my ass. Really? The feeling is mutual. Pains in my ass. Yes. Let's get to it right now. I first want to say that I loved this Dave Spadaro past first league game plan this week all right tennessee's defense coming in with the number three ranked rush defense and the worst pass defense in the league and what did we do if this was an andy reed game plan we'd have tried to fool him and rush the ball all the time nick sirianni said we're going for broke and and, and i mean 67 total rushing yards for the Eagles. They did not care. Now, I get it. The average yards per, uh, per carry for the Eagles were down this week, but they didn't concentrate on that. 
we're talking about a quarterback that threw for 390 yards. I believe uh, uh, 380. 380, sorry. Uh, Dave, that's a career best, right? No, he was seven off. He had 387 last year against somebody, I forget who it was, Arizona maybe, or two years ago, rookie year. Did he have any interceptions in that game, you know? Because mm, he had three touchdowns yeah, no, and no, no this interceptions. In no, this, this was a great game. And pass, his passing rating was through the roof. Every, everything that Jalen is doing is great, and the offense is showing incredible versatility. Last week against Green Bay, 363 on the ground, now 390-plus on the ground because Minshew had a, a, a completion. In the air. Um, it's, it's something I've never seen. He, he's got – Jalen Hurts has a 58% completion rate of passes over 25 yards. That is crazy. That is absolutely – that's just stupid. And that's it's one of the knocks stupid. on him coming into the season. Exactly. A, he couldn't throw the long ball. Exactly. Couldn't throw the long ball. Couldn't roll left exactly. to throw it. Couldn't throw it over the middle. And, and Jalen worked on everything, every part of his game, and now we see what he is. 387 uh, against Kansas City. In Kansas City. Four. Okay, yeah. Now, Unfortunate loss, but still a hell of a game. We're also going to talk about what I was right on because <laughs> I'm not letting – you guys are very quick to point out every time I'm wrong. Of course. Pre-game show on Sunday at Xfinity Live. I said Derrick Henry would be stuffed. Henry. Henry. Did I say that? Henry. Derrick Henry. 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 Derrick Henry would be <laughs> stuffed. <laughs> the Eagles would win by at least 17 points. I said 37-17. Agreed. Okay. Thank I don't you. Know. I wasn't listening. I, I also said, said reach, give yourself a reach around. Pat yourself on the back. Hold on a second. <laughs> give yourself a reach. Around. All right, Jansen, that's just as bad. Call it. AJ, what did I say about AJ Brown? <laughs> <laughs> that I do remember. You I said that. AJ Brown would have eight receptions for 140 yards, two touchdowns, and a reception of at least 40 yards. Jansen slash pull it up. He didn't have 140 <laughs> yards. He had, uh, what, 119? Something like that, but yeah. he nailed the two touchdowns. But he had eight receptions, two touchdowns, and a reception for 40 yards. Okay. And Devontae and Smith think had a great game, too. And yeah. you called that a great game. We didn't know the Eagles were going to go to the air the way they did, and that was a great call on your part. But I just want to say uh, it's, it's, it's open forum now to talk about this, but if you think I'm going to shut up about what I predicted last week, you obviously don't know me. No, I, I, I look at it how Dave was just speaking about the game. I mean, it was just it was total domination. I mean, like once the Eagles got into the second half, it was no longer a game. The Eagles just stole their will. And that's the impressive part about what they did the other day. And we were talking about it on the pregame show was like everybody was sitting there looking at this team for them to like – be physical mm -hmm. against a physical football team and be the, the, you know, the, the physically dominating team that, you know, like they look at the Eagles and they go, well, they're more of a finesse team. Like, yeah, we're built through the trenches, but you know, I don't know why. They, why do people look? I at don't the agree like with that. that. No, no it's, but it's not but, true. But, the, but that's the reason why a lot of people have put the Niners over them like oh, over recent oh, weeks in power oh. rankings is because they see how physical of a team they are and they want to see the Eagles do that against a team like the Titans because that's what they're known for. That's what the – under Mike Rabel, that's, that's been their M.O. has been physicality. The Eagles just completely destroyed them up and down the field. It was impressive. And, like, to see the stuff that, like, Dallas is, like, 50% – to win the Super Bowl on ESPN oh, that, that's a joke. over the Eagles, yeah, it's a like joke. after they what they throttled the Colts. I mean, good for you. I mean, but the Eagles beat one of the best teams in the NFL and the Titans over the last five six years. It was impressive. Well, Earth. it's just smart play calling. If you have a team that's the, the third hardest team in the league to run the ball on, and you got don't run the ball, and you got AJ Brown, right. and you got uh, Devontae Smith, it's like with the Packers. And, and what I like to see, I also saw the fact that they figured out how to get the ball to the tight ends in the middle of the field. Thank Jack you. Stoll, one of the tight end, yes, yeah. Jack Stoll had three yes. receptions. Yes. Grant Calcaterra yes. had one for 19 yards. Right. They right. got him back into the mix. They got him back awesome. in the mix. It was we talked awesome about that a lot last week, too, about yes. between the, uh, you know, because between the, the lines. Because the game prior to that, they didn't get a pass. They didn't even target the tight ends. So this this past week against the Titans, they even got the ball to the tight ends. It was just it was a masterful uh, game plan and masterful execution. And so now you look at an offense that has played without Dallas Goddard. You look at an offense that has seen the ability, has shown the ability to win on the ground, win in the air, win against the blitz, win against zone, win against man, 
What, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you don't want me to say that I'm not convinced. What questions do you have? Wait, you're not convinced about something? What questions do you have about the offense? None. What Bill Parcell says, you are what your record says you are. They're the best team in the league right now. 11-1. and one. They are. An 11 and 1 team. Yeah, they are who their record says they are. are. They, 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 they Dave, are. Dave, I want to I want to have a direct conversation with you right now because you know I have not been positive about this team for right. a very Kyle, long let's time. Let's take a break. I have been sure. I have been nothing but positive about this team and yeah. actually, actually the ability to game plan uh, you know we're giving we're giving players credit right now but I want to give coaching credit right now. Because the game plan for this particular matchup on Sunday was awesome. It had everything to do with exploiting the Titans' weaknesses and allowing the linebacker core to go nuts. The linebacker, Christian Ellis, okay? How much do we know about Christian Ellis? He had five tackles in this game, all right? And kept Derrick Henry in check. And that is an amazing statistic. That's what was most impressive to me about this game was that the defensive line never, Derrick Henry never got an opportunity to get started. Started, exactly. He, he hardly you. got into the line of pass line. 2.7 yards per carry, 30 yards with the best running, second best running back in the league. There's Philadelphia, the Eagles defense took away their one, number one strength, which is the running game, and put the ball in Tannehill's hands and made him, forced him to have to throw the ball. And like Sack said, took away their spirit right away. He could not get open for anything. What was his uh, – hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. I know box score. You guys hate 11 this. 11 for 30, I think. No, it's not that. I want to look at uh, his – Who's longest, he? No, his – Henry had six, Derek, a six-yard run. That was his longest run. Yeah. So, hold the phone. Yeah, okay. But, All right. He he falls for six can we, yards. Can we finally agree that my prediction of fourteen and three is a legitimate? Oh, possibility? so wait, wait. That was the whole purpose of this conversation. It was right. Right. to right. say right. that I'm right. right. Yes. 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 That, yep. I mean, not all this. Like I was what twelve and five. I mean, like we're all pretty much like right in that range. No one ever said no, 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 no. Games. No, I want to be completely accurate and hold this guys over you for the next season. Do we need to buy you a crown or something? Yeah. You want some kind of uh, – We'll just take him to Burger King. We'll get him a I kid's meal and get him one of those I, nice crowns. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I don't even – Hold on a I'll second. Hold cream. on a second. No, no, no. I'm good with you guys taking me to Burger King for a Happy Meal. Oh, that's McDonald's. McDonald's is a Happy Kids Meal. meal. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you a kid's meal. No, hold on. You guys are all taking me to Burger King. That's how we feel about you meal. right now. She's representing how we feel about you right now. You can do that with both of them if you'd like. She just walked up to Quimby and said, yeah. you're number one. That, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Most right, women so say that to Quimby. Your preseason. And, the, and the best part is, I, 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 I can't. Your preseason analysis is obviously and better than your postseason analysis. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, but Dia, but didn't, Quimby, didn't you think the Eagles scored a little too fast against the. Uh, <laughs> they put up 35 way too quick against Tennessee. <laughs> I have not been that. Uh, introspective? Is that the word I want to use? I want to know what Lauren thought about uh, the game. Did you go to the game? Do you watch the game on Sunday, Lauren? I do watch the game when I get home. What did you think of the game on Sunday against the Titans? I thought it was exciting. I liked what we were doing, and we should keep doing it. Yeah, see, that's fine. <laughs> what do you think about the one-on-one -on -one cover? Oh, my God, she sounds like an athlete. We can end the show right now. Yep. Just end the show. They don't call her the best color analyst in the game for nothing. Thank you, Jason. John Jansen. By the way, by the way, <laughs> let's point out a couple interesting facts. Actually, that nugget was anything... That's much better than what John yeah. Jansen provides on the line chain. Yep, I got it. Monday through Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I who the oh, f is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was interesting that the Eagles dominated the game without any turnovers, 67 yeah. yards total rushing, and no field goals whatsoever. You know, it, it's it's funny how they completely flipped the script from that Green Bay game, right? But that's coaching. That's what good coaching does. They see the weaknesses of the opposition, and they exploit it. We knew that it was a bottom-tier bottom, bottom tier rushing defense with Green Bay. What do you do? 363. You, you put it on the ball. You know that they're a bottom, the bottom third of the league 
in, in, in pass defense for you the Titans, it. you throw the football. That's good coaching. They saw exactly what the Bengals did to Derrick Henry or Derrick Henry last week <laughs> with the Bengals. Like the Bengals were sitting there. They put him, they put eight men in the box. <laughs> you know what? Here's, here's what's. Yes, no, sorry, I have to talk ahead. a lot here. Man. This, what's the most beautiful thing about all of this? The change up, you know, running the ball for th- over 300 and some yards, then passing the ball for almost 400 yards. This is a copycat league. That film is going around the league. The Giants are going to see that film. The Bears are going to see that film, but they're not seeing the same thing week out, week in and week out. There's no pattern. There's nothing that they're sitting there trying to figure out how are we going. How can we? What can we say, do to stop this? I team? love so the, what you're so saying the, right so the, now. So the Giants look at the last two weeks on on tape for the Eagles, and they what, go, "What, is what can we do? What can we do? Yeah, what are they doing? What can we do? Yeah, what 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 tendencies do they have? Well, what keys can we look at? What what? There's nothing. It if goes, we have nothing. a weakness, it's getting there's no weakness. It's getting. It, it goes back to this. The only thing that has stopped the Eagles' offense this year is penalties and mm. giveaways. And if the Eagles can minimize, and they had a lot of penalties on Sunday. And that didn't even stop them. Six nope. false starts. Incredible. The so false team, starts and the illegal man down the field. And, and, and there was motion. It was just I don't re- know what that ridiculous. was. Yeah. Yeah. All, every, everybody on the line, offensive line, seemed to be taking turns. Even Kelsey had a couple. Well, I feel like every time they had a, a first and long yeah. after a penalty, 12-yard yeah. pass down the middle. Right, like, right. They, they made it back up like immediately. The only team. But still can't happen. The only team in the NFL right now that can stop the Philadelphia Eagles is the Philadelphia Eagles. How about that special team? Man, I, I thought you were going to say something else, and I was about to wreck you. Oh, I know you were. but I'm, I'm, I was literally looking on a ch- uh, for a chance I'm, to I'm jump on. in. Just like you tried to stop me when I was asking Kaiser that question because you thought I was going to go somewhere crazy with it. I know how to ask questions. No, no, no. It's, it's, none of it's as crazy as he yeah, would go with to, anything. I know how to ask questions. Hey, but listen. If we're going to talk about special teams, though, I think Dave should go ahead and talk about our punt returner because he had a pretty damn good day. Not yet. Not yet. No, not, not yet, yet. Not yet. You want to talk about Great Britain? No, because. <laughs> Great Britain. Would you guys no, read the rundown sheet, please? I, I, I don't have the run sheet. I only have the no, Kaiser no, right one. So. All right. Well, hold on a second. Let's do this. McCungy. We're 916. I actually want to point out on our second set an amazing performance by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players who you might not think had. A perform would have a performance like they did. I don't want to talk about it until the second set because I think it's something that can take us all the way to break. Right now, right now, I want to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Well, Philly's just signed Taiwan Walker to a four-year, seventy-two million dollar deal to be in their rotation. So they that bolts they've ta- up they've, the starting. They've rotation. taken care of their rotation. They've taken care of their starting lineup, and now they go to the bullpen. It's uh, Dave Dombrowski is making moves. Are you coming up to tell me I'm number one again? You can do it with both fingers, middle yes. toes, however you'd like it. Hold on. She can't count to 20 without taking her shoes off. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> she, I have no idea. How frequent she is that? She said you can't count to 20 when you're sober. <laughs> you didn't know that he was the youngest guy ever to be enrolled in Drexel, 16 years old? Oh, yeah, that's oh, accurate. Uh, but this was a long time ago. All right, good. Do you want to come up? You sure? Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> Jeez. Again, we never dated. Stop. We never dated. Stop Not yet. Dave. Stop, Dave. Did she pay you to say that? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Dave right now is texting me going, get this girl. <laughs> No, I'm reading about Taiwan Walker. I'm trying That's to find not what where, you're where doing. is it. That, that <laughs> definitely bulks up the uh, you, you starting frown, rotation. You were frowning. Oh no, no, no! I was, I was reading. <laughs> I can't see anything. I'm not listening anyway. I'm, I'm really, I'm really not paying attention to the show. I got to tell you, <laughs> you, I'm you, you time. haven't. Why are you not paying? No, attention? hold on. He hasn't since Guy's ear left. Yeah, yeah. He's just sitting back. I don't care. I'm guys, giving you guys complete autonomy to talk as are. much as you want. Everybody, you know what, Jansen? We're going to take an early break here. On this first segment, we come back. I, I I literally have an excellent segment about players that you wouldn't expect. Flyers big like win list. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> because I was there. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Lauren. They beat the defending Stanley Cup champions. The cup is coming home. Let's go! Everybody, Echelon Health and Fitness, located in Voorhees, New Jersey, but the best gym in South Jersey, five years in a row. Membership starting at eight ninety nine per month. Family and locally owned indoor track, newest cardio, strength training equipment, three studios, indoor pool, whirlpool, and dry sauna, even a kid's club. Over 100 group fitness and Thrive personal training sessions. 
classes for seniors, real life fitness, MBSC, Thrive Personal Training, considered the best group training in the country and is exclusively offered in South Jersey at Echelon Health and Fitness. Member perks. Echelon members save at over 800 local businesses simply for being an active member. Coming to Audubon in 2023, which is not far away, call 856-454-2976 for a free 30-day all-access pass. That's 856-454-2976. Or go to echelonhf.com. That's echelonhfhealthfitness.com. Everybody, this is Green Legion Radio Player Show, broadcasting from Live Casino in South Philadelphia. We will be back right after this. <laughs> Clear. Thank you. Yeah, Q. We, there we can we. Shout out to how bad the football team was. Holy <laughs> God. Excellent. Dude. Go. I can't hear you otherwise. Yeah, no, Diaz's uh, two, fantasy team is that bad. Wins. Perfect. And uh, did you did you see how I beat you this week? Huh? Oh, I know. Like by point three points because the Colts <laughs> defense sucked, and I forgot to put Baltimore in. I went to bed that night and they just given up like the fortieth point. And I, but when I woke up the next morning, I'm talking to my buddy at work. I was like, oh, I lost to Quimby. I was like, wait a minute, hold on. They give up fifty points. Oh my god. Yeah. I, I'm still in the playoffs. Love you, brother. John, how long is this? Uh, you got 2.30. I'm good, thank you. Gotcha. Eric, can we? <laughs> Do it, can we? Do it, can we? Rocky Zimmerman. You, you, you watch the ball for 30 yards. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the si- Tyron Walker signing? It's pretty 12 and 5 last year. I like it. 3.49 ERA. Well, he's he's a great number four. Oh, dude. Yeah, it's nothing like nothing game changing, but it's yeah. it was a needed. But if Andrew sign. Painter is what they say he is. Oh, I know. Don't that's, get me that excited that's, about it because I don't game changer. I don't want to get so excited about him, and then like they they hold him yeah, back or you know. I just, dude, Kyle, Kyle Drayback. Dombrowski <laughs> does not care. Dombrowski's. Like, I know. I want this kid to be so good. I want all three of those kids: McGarry, uh, Painter. Remind and, me uh, when yeah. I come back. Uh, we are going to release our packages on Monday for the Phillies home opener. Ooh. Yo. Yeah. I just have hey, to figure out how much I want to make. Where are your seats with the Giants? Upstairs. Did you guys do a big package? I need to see the pack. See that? Is Painter going to come up this year? Painter is 19. He turns 20 in April. Woo! Woo! When was the last time the Phillies had a guy that came up at 20 years old? <laughs> ever. F- have they ever? How old is Noah? I know Noah came up early, but Noah's I'm pretty sure he was. Noah went to college. Yeah, I, I was about to say he was a I little I saw bit Noah's first career win. Actually, Quimby did too because we were on the rooftop bleachers at Wrigley the day after Cole Hamels threw the no-hitter at Wrigley. Ah, nice. So I was at the game in the ballpark for the no-hitter, and then we were on rooftop bleachers for Nola's second start and his first win. I was swept the say, Cubs that year. They went to the NLCS that year, and the Phillies were dog crap. I was going to say dog crap. crap. Twenty three, complete and utter dog crap. And we sw- we went into Wrigley and swept them that weekend. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Game winning home run on a Friday night by Jeff Fran. Jeff Fran. Jeff Francor. Jeff Francor. Jesus. Who said, who said Jeff Francor? I did. Of course I did. <laughs> I love who Jeff. else would? Terrible. <laughs> Does Quimby not like Jeff Francor? Yeah. Yeah, sure. sure. This could be like anyone. Sure Ten I seconds. I was at topdoglaw.com. Once again, topdoglaw.com. The Gambler, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. You're up. All right, everybody. Welcome to the show. Super Sam Brady. Stop, please. No. I remember when you used to be mousy on the microphone, and now you're in charge. Well, here's the thing. I'm a little agitated about that win last night, so. You're Why? Getting- no, no, Eagles. it's a great thing. It's great for the Eagles. It, it's good for the Eagles, but it's it's bad for my relationship with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but he's three and one now since he got divorced for you. I, I want him to be worse. <laughs> mm. 
Everybody, the Green Legion Radio Player Show with Super Sam Brady, <laughs> the Reverend, the Doctor, Irving Fryer, host of your Philadelphia Eagles Insider Podcast, Dave Spadaro, Chris Sackmaster, Sack Attack, Reggie, Ooh-ha-ha. hosting nothing, Lauren, in Not turn. She, she, she contributed. She did. She, did. she, she was did. the star of the last segment. She was. She was Actually, the star. What she said is, is, is like people cared more about that than they yeah. care about what we're saying. 100%. She said she said she was, and I quote, excited about the victory on Sunday. Nice. Perfect. <laughs> Keep and doing so, what you're doing is kind of what she yeah. said. And perfect. Yeah. So, Sam, you want Tom Brady to be worse? Is it so that you can lift him up? No. Oh. <laughs> No, spiritually I just, or physically. Or? Since we started dating, he's been progressively worse, and he every time he does well, I feel like I'm not contributing enough. Everybody, real quick before we get into the relationship status of Super Sam Brady at Live Casino, make Live Casino Hotel in Philadelphia your game day destination, whether home or away. Head to Center Bar and Sports and Social to watch the game, enjoy food and drink specials, giveaways, contests, and more. Ron Jaworski's $100,000 football challenge. Make your picks against Ron Jaworski each week for your chance to win your share of $100,000 in prizes and Jaws tickets to the big game. Er, we're going to be talking about that big game after the show. Yes, sir. We got a lot of good stuff to talk about. Visit any promotional kiosk to make your picks each week. By the way, MGM, bet MGM, everybody. Log on, type in code word green, and you have a $1,000 risk free bet, everybody. Uh, $1,000 risk free bet. You guys, uh, I would like to point out some performances that you wouldn't think. Then you want to hit something? You. What? Oh, that's right. Uh, on that's Monday, why he's a producer. Thank Good you, job. sir. Oh, and by the way, who, who, who didn't? Thank you. Uh, who, did, who didn't get named? Uh, slash always. Best part of our show is Mister Consistency right here. Yes, not saying much. Steady I'll Eddie. Take it anyway. Steady Eddie. Uh, on Monday, everyone. On Monday, the Green Legion will be releasing two hundred ticket and tailgate packages. For the Phillies home opener, they will not be $99 this year. <laughs> Just so you know. What makes you say that? Inflation. Yes. Thank you, Joe Biden. Uh, are we going to have an opening day baseball brunch again this season? Oh, please. I spoke to Dorenzi at length today, and we will make sure that this thing takes place. Yes. So how much this is do? not over. Yes. <laughs> Uh, more than likely, probably looking at about 149 for ticket and tailgate. Okay. It's Which, honestly not by that By the bad. way, uh, you know, I'm a great I've, deal. I've never been in a position of trying to screw people, just making sure that we're, well, other I, really. And, uh, the, the, the best part on. was, Giggity. the best part was she was so far away from the microphone and you still heard her. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, we'll talk about that. Turner, uh, Walker, uh, who else are they going to have by opening day? It's going to be. Fantastic. All right, so I'm going to talk about performances right now because this is important. We're going to go through real fast the ones that you thought could do it. All right, the first one, Jalen Hurts. Obviously, 29 for 39, 380, three touchdowns. Awesome. Does anybody want to add anything on that right now? I think he could have had, uh, you know, a little less incompletions in that game. <laughs> Seven or eight would have been fine. I think his ten, pass rating was much. 130. I don't think you ran enough. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you, know, you know what's great about that? Is it because he didn't run that much, it cost Diaz his same game parlay. <laughs> that would have hit for like $2,500. Oh, really? oh, yeah. Yes, yes. So. I just, I, I just really am pr- I'm impressed by the fact that there's really nothing that he can't do. Exactly. And everything that he's doing, he's doing it at – a, a high level of excellence. Can you and I talk yeah. about this real fast and just for a hot second? All right. You and I both agree that this kid's work ethic was out of control. Every single naysayer that has come his way, he has been able to shut up. Mm-hmm. Yep. And honestly, 
Uh, but uh, Dave, uh, he's in what year three or four of year his three of his rookie contract? Mm -hmm. Year three. And I believe Howie Roseman will do what he always does, and what he is remarkable at, which is signing him to a long-term deal before his contract is over. If you don't think Jalen Hurts is our quarterback of the now and future, then you do not know the game of football. This, sorry. I just don't I don't know that I, I haven't really thought about that. I mean, he's certainly been great. But I just want to say this: like there is a difference now as you come down the stretch and in the playoffs, the game does change. And so I think the next test for Jalen right. will be those in that oh, environment. OK, Dave. All right. From everything. Doesn't matter. Yeah, hold on a second. No, hold on. From everything you've seen from Jalen Hurts, do you feel as though he's up for the challenge yes. because I do. Yes. yes, I do. And and I think so too. Everything that you see from him, every, I mean, every week the game gets, like you said, a little more important and he rises to the occasion. He's been doing a lot with his legs, doing a lot with his arms. People are always questioning or have been questioning, uh, can he do it with his arm? Well, he showed us, and I think that really pushed him over the edge and put him uh, in the front running. I'm glad the, he was pissed. Of, of the MVP situation this year. He's in the front running, and that pass, all those passes, all those touchdowns, almost 400 yards, that's what put him over the top. I also think, too, like, this guy doesn't forget. Think about it. I mean, last you year. You got to play with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, right? Last, last year, and he doesn't speak about it, but last year, the worst start of his, of his career, his season last year, was probably the playoff game. Outside of that, it was at MetLife against yes. the Giants last year. And he knows that. And he's not going to speak on it. He's not going to bring it up. But he knows that last year MetLife Stadium was a house of horrors for him. He needs to go in there. And like you said, when we had Kaiser on the show in the first segment, he like, this is the biggest game of the season because it's the next game of the season. Right. But to me, this right here is for him to go up there and show last year what happened in that game was a fluke. And now he's not going up there with Jalen Rager. He's going up there with A.J. Brown and a seasoned Devontae Smith. He's looking to make some noise. Avoid the turnovers. Stay away from turning over the ball, which he's done all season long. He's been fantastic. To me, that's been the most impressive thing about Jalen Hurts three season interceptions. is the uh, ability to protect the football. Real quick, uh, stay on this, but uh, real quick, Kevin Settles, our, uh, our home tailgate expertise, I would forfeit my day's pay to see that race. <laughs> I would. It's going to be a waste of time. How much is it? Yeah. How much is the day? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, because it's not going to be. Much. Anyway, go. What were you going to say? <laughs> Wait. Much cool. like other things in Quimby's life, it's not going to last long. A forty-yard dash between the two of you guys? It's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God. Um. <laughs> I think it's. I think the Giants. Let, let's respect the Giants' defense. They play really hard. They've got an excellent front. I'm getting more pissed at you every second. They get. I'm, be, I'm beyond pissed. <laughs> wait, wait till we run. Good. It's, it's so that's happening. <laughs> is it Irv doing running backwards and no, you're running, I'm not running forward? Backwards. I'm not running backwards. I'm not running I'll still backwards. take Irv. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think yeah. I can. I don't think I can beat him backwards. Can we sell tickets I to do. this? Uh, we can amputate Irv's legs, be, and I'll still take Irv. There's a four-hour tailgate package for this. <laughs> uh, actually, it should be going to Irv's foundation, which is going to be PassOnCancer.net. Yes, sir. It's coming, everybody. Just so you know, and yeah, I think we should. Dave, what were you saying? I just, I think that I think the Giants will play really hard on Sunday. I think they've got an excellent front seven. Their their back does not match up with the Eagles. I mean, I would, I would guess, you know, you throw the ball a lot. Like one thing they do really well, they they line Dexter Lawrence up right on the nose, right over top of Kelsey, and it's just a lot of bulk, a lot of mass, and they just try they'll try to knock Kelsey back. So it might be difficult to run. It may be difficult for Jalen to run. I would expect Jalen to have to win the game from the pocket. And I think that's where the Eagles have a big advantage. But I don't think it will be easy. And I think that fans are starting to creep right back into that. Eagles are going to blow out the Giants. Eagles oh, no. are going to blow out the Bears. Then it's the Cowboys. Nah, then not that three-game road trip. All right, hold on. And, and, and this is a perfect segue. And, Sack, you're up next. I say right now, all right, to get to that 14-3, and three, the wins are this week against the Giants, and I believe the team's up for it because somebody has to tell them you do not want to wind up with the last game of the season having to play that hard for a first-round bye against a division opponent, followed up by 
Dave, I disagree with you just a little bit for Chicago. I'm sorry. I think Chicago is freaking terrible. I think that's a trap game. I don't think it's a trap, I think game. It's a trap game. I agree with Quimby on that one. I think that's not going to be a trap game. Not really? a trap game at all. Chicago is I think they're terrible. terrible. And here's they the, here's terrible. the worst. They always have trouble in Chicago, though, I will here's say. Here's the worst. No, we, that we, the last time we were there, like Houston. we had the double it's doink, terrible. and before that was 2016. We've won the last two times we've been there yeah, in the six The double years. doink, they have trouble with Chicago. That just helps my point. No, not at all. I believe they, lost that, on a, they went on a double doink. I believe, <laughs> I believe, which – Goes against what I said. I said they would be five and one in the division. I think they wind up going four and two. And the reason is, I believe you win Giants, Bears. Okay. And then you lose to the Cowboys. It's going to be a tough one. I don't like it. I don't like Christmas Eve. I don't like Saturday games. I don't like six days rest, even though the Cowboys are coming off the same, but they don't have to leave. They're home. I think the 14 and three and the clincher for this team is New Year's Day against the Saints. They win 14 wins, first round by. Don't give a damn about the game after that. That's where I go. So, so under the scenario that you're presenting, um, who, are the, who are the Vikings losing to? Who's Minnesota losing to? Do you see the spread on that game this week in Detroit? I'm not. I'm, there's no. There would be uh, no way I will ever believe that Detroit will win a significant game. I never hold on, believe hold Detroit. On. I agree with Dave on that. 100. percent De- Hold on. I mean, I think they're market, a better team. Market. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a first time for anything. Watermark. They're, yeah, they're a better team, but I, I just never believe that they will win a significant game. This is a big game for the Giants too. I mean, like we we do not want to lose another division game. You already lost the Commanders. You don't want to lose another division game heading into that Dallas game and. Again, we already talked about it on the pregame show this past Sunday. Dallas has the Texans, and then they have to go to Jacksonville. Like, we want to go into that Dallas game with a two-game advantage over them. But the Giants are going to play hard. That tie did not help their case with the playoffs the other day by tying the commanders because they're going to have to play them again next week. And they know, and, like, you, you have some of these other teams that are, that are chomping at the bit that are coming up behind, like Seattle. They could be very easily out of the playoffs because of that tie if they wind up losing in Washington after they lose to us. So they're playing hard, and they're, they're going to come. They're going to bring their lunch pail that day. The Eagles have to be prepared for everything. They're going to bring the kitchen sink, too. Where, yeah, both, both the Giants and, and Washington can possibly, would possibly be out of the race for the playoffs. Hold on real quick. Dave, do you believe, gonna make it. Do you believe 14 and 3 is the number one seed in the NFL or in the NFC? Uh, no. 15 and 2. Probably. I don't really see the Vikings losing many games. Maybe one more game. Wow. Yeah. So you, you think we're going to have to play through the season? I just think we have to beat the Giants on Sunday. I really, I mean, you guys are, I'm just like no, not paying I, attention I, to no, anything no, you're saying. I really, I, one week at a time. I one honestly don't like, I, I, it's really boring, but I, I truly don't even, I haven't even really even thought that far away. All right. Well, let, because I know things can change. One, one loss right. changes everything. 100%. So uh, going through this, uh, the performances that you wouldn't expect. Obviously, Jalen Hurts. We had fun with that. A.J. Brown, eight for 119, two touchdowns. That was expected. I called it. You know why I bring that up? Uh, did you call that on Sunday? <laughs> because <laughs> I called that. Quimby, you're good. Isn't who, Quimby good who, at predicting who, who things? I would, who, I would somebody, like, somebody I would like to Devon, highlight sacks. Quimby somebody knows said a lot. Devontae Smith would have a big game. I No, I want to highlight sack right now because – he Can you said say Chris Sack? Because we don't want to highlight Sack. You know. <laughs> uh, sack Master had the best prediction on the pregame show, which was Devontae Smith, who went five for 102 and a touchdown. They were overlooking him. Uh, like obviously, obviously, them putting their focus on AJ Brown looking for revenge against the Tennessee Titans, which, by the way, led to their general manager getting fired today. Fired, yeah. Oh <laughs> well, today. You know, for, for making that move. But they they had all that attention on AJ Brown. Yet, on the other side, you have two wide receiver ones on this team, and Devontae Smith is special. He was special in college. He's special here. The guy just goes and gets the ball. He runs phenomenal routes. And he's going to make you pay. You want to sit there and you want to put your attention to A.J. Brown? 
good luck because we got another guy on the other side that can catch the football too. And when Dallas Goddard comes back over the next couple weeks, I'm hopeful here. Oh, yeah. I hear he's he's feeling pretty oh, well yeah. with the shoulder. All right. It's yeah. And hopefully we can get him back in the lineup ahead of the Dallas game. We can kind of get him some reps leading into that. Uh, but, man, it's just – it's dangerous. It's a bevy of riches at, that what Jalen has to throw to. We got so, one minute hey, before hey, break. Go. Hey, Spud, you know what I said on Sunday? I said that uh, Devontae Smith will start <laughs> – Devontae Smith will start out getting some balls, and then they loosen up because – he loosen up on A.J. because Devontae and start paying attention to Devontae. Then Giggity. A.J. Brown – we start getting his catches. Yeah, but did you and have the Eagles at fourteen and three on the season? Oh no, no I didn't have. You had them thirteen and four. Thirteen and four. But that's what happened. Everybody, we're at center <laughs> bar here at. I had Jack stole a three for forty-one. On you Sunday. did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won. <laughs> I wish I did. Everybody, Shout out Jack stole live casino South Philadelphia. This is the Green Legion <laughs> Radio Player Show with Slash Sack. Host of your Philadelphia Eagles Insider Podcast, Dave Spadaro, Super Sam Brady, legendary wide receiver, Eagles for three years, the doctor, the Reverend Irving Fryer, Lauren intern from Westchester University, everybody out here in the crowd, which has been great today. My name is Quimby, coming back for our last segment, Fox Sports the Gambler, 102.5 FM Philadelphia. We will be back right after this. I'm close. Good morning, football. Nice. Uh, thank you. 430. Thank you. Hey, guys. You guys, what'd you say? Look at me. Hold on. Put your. Oh, he is good. You guys. Oh. Let me rip through because. you play with Herschel? When we get back, let me rip through because I, I mentioned the three that we should see great performances from. I've got five that we Whatever should. Whatever you want to rip through, rip through. But each, no, each one, give me 30 seconds. Yeah, give you, give you a minute. I'm cool. I, I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> oh, Spud's just sitting back enjoying this. Spud's is chilling. I'm chilling. I'm tired of shit. By the way, you really think Vikings could go 14 and 3? Sorry? You think the Vikings go 14 and 3? I have no idea. You just said it. You are such a prick sometimes. No you know that? <laughs> Give me a goddamn opinion. They're at Detroit, home against the Colts, at home against the Giants, in Green Bay on New Year's Day, and then they play the Bears in the final week of the season. They can run that team. The Giants, and they got tough. I just say, 14 and 3 takes first round by. The Giants are going to win the playoffs. They have us. They have us, then they go to Washington. Then they have to go to, to, to Minnesota. They have us in the last week of the season. Jansen, how much time? Three minutes. He's embarrassed. Yeah, it's embarrassed. Embarrassed. Listening to him, watching him. This country's him. embarrassing. Yeah, embarrassed. Well, yeah, you're right about that too. And other other countries are laughing at us. Just look at us and laugh. We're supposed to be the, the best, best yeah. the best country in the world. This, we're, where's that? Show me. We got homeless people. We got <laughs> hungry people. We got violence left and right. You know, it's people dying, killing one another, drug problems. How are we the best country in the world? Because the rest of the country is fucked up too. <laughs> the rest of the world's fucked up too. I don't know. The, I, maybe we don't get but the you news. Know it's really weird. Tell me about this. The Christian coalition spreads so much hate that I just don't get it. It's, and it's opposite of what Christianity is I know, supposed to be about. I, I, I mean, we don't get, I don't watch the, uh, I don't see any news like, say, from China. But do they have a lot of, do they have mass killings? In I don't China? think you're, no, they don't have guns. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. They don't have mass killings in China. Yeah, they don't have people going to schools, killing people, going to grocery stores, yeah. shooting people up. Yeah. They don't have that kind of stuff going on. Yeah. It's really crazy. Just ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. Scary. Tell my wife she go to the grocery store. You gotta watch your back. I know. Watch your back. Here, my my buddy said he turned he turned off the show after hearing Quimby say that he would beat you in a race. He goes, guess he wants to be the next Angelo Cataldi. Blow out both hamstrings live on air. <laughs> All for his brand. I had Angelo on the show when I was playing. 
did the uh, Andrew on Irving show uh, on Monday. I guess it was Monday nights, and uh, I showed him a move that I did on a on a slant route. Where I took three steps and squatted the guy, and I knocked. I showed Andrew. He wasn't gonna show him, but I did it to him, and I knocked him off the stage. He fell down. <laughs> I thought I killed him, man. Dude, I'm going to miss him in the mornings. Oh, he's great. Joey Cameron's weak. Weak soft. I think he's boring. Weak. Really boring. The guy overslept at 10 o'clock. You're boring. I think John Jansen. 40 seconds. John Jansen should be the morning host. Yeah, I guess. Um, I should definitely not be the morning host of anything. You should. (laughs) Because there's no way I would get up. Or I'm good enough. Even if you got 30 seconds. Oh, boom. I heartland in Fortnite games, yeah. friends, fun. What, 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 one more time. Check, check, check. The hottest concerts. Check, check, check. I heartland in Fortnite games, yeah. friends, fun. Ready up and grab your squad. Stand up. Yeah. Go to iHeartRadio.com slash iHeartland to start playing. The Gambler, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Yup. I'm going to you every time, jackass. <laughs> there we go. Everybody, Green Legion Radio Players Show here at Live Casino. Yeah, we're having Green, fun. Green what? Radio? What? Player Show. Green Boys Legion Radio, Radio Players Show. Nobody I, else heard that voice. I crack? did not dare with Henry that one. Player, player. I heard the voice crack. <laughs> for the for the loyal listeners of the program, too, next week will be another Diaz list show. Woo! I will be hosting since you will yes! be you'll be gone. Yes. So uh just give everybody uh, a heads up. And by the way, uh the one of the most fun parts about what we do, we will have a live show starting at 9 30 a.m. On Sunday. Yes, sir. On the way up the Jersey Turnpike. And there's Melanie, who. Hold on. I could only. Everybody else hates me, but she's great. Everybody, there's Melanie. There's something wrong with her. Melanie runs 1100 Social, where we have our tailgates. Melanie, how are you? Hold on. Yes. There we go. Hold on. This is the best right now. I don't have fans. Thank you, Melody. Not Thank many for, women say that. <laughs> Thank you for being my one. <laughs> oh, my God. That was hysterical. Please. Hey, How much let her drink? do that again. Right. Call her an Uber. <laughs> Not at all. Get Everybody, safe. <laughs> all right. Real fast. I'm going to throw it to Dave every time and then Herb and then Sack. All right. Thanks. The surprising... <laughs> Last but the not surprising least. experiences, the surprising roles that took place on Sunday. Let's do it. We already talked about this. Jack Stoll and Grant Calcaterra. Four catches, four 60 catches, yards. 60 yards. Thank yeah. you. Uh, anybody else want to say no. something? On I, that? And, you know, I talked to Jack after the game. He was thrilled. He credited uh, coming onto the show as what really kind of <laughs> boosted him in this 2022 season. He felt a lot of confidence from you, Quimby. <laughs> was this? Quez Watkins with five receptions. Still doing it. a little crossing routes, a couple of uh, a jet sweep. Um, he's, an, he's, another, he's another tool. He's another weapon that yep. this team has that you just can't account for because you're paying so much attention to an A.J. Brown. Everybody else. Devontae Smith, the two of Miles Sanders, to Jalen Hurts, and then here comes Quez. I think Quez, is, is, as you look at him as a receiver, he's very ta- I think he's a very talented guy. Yes, yes. I like his speed. I like I like that element of his game. It's a little bit different. It's it's, yeah. it's definitely he has he can like really get to that high level of speed faster than than AJ Brown and Devontae Smith have the ability to. Uh, I want to see them exploit that more. I want to see them th- again. Th- again, how do you get the football to everybody that you want to get the football to? That's the challenge. Uh, no, I, I, I get you, but I, that play that they had in the Vikings game, like I. Somewhere along right. the line, I would love to see that again yeah. because the, that that's the kind of play. I mean, obviously, Goddard was the reason why that play really happened in that game, but I would love to see that again. And, and Quez is a real talent. I, I think, you know, given the opportunity, he could be a number two receiver on any team in the NFL. And so you, you got, yes, I believe he could be that number two guy. Not the number one guy, but the number two guy. He does a great job. He's got great speed. He's from the got slot, good, though, right? Yeah, well, you can move him around. He can run his routes from the outside. He's got the speed to run routes from the outside. That's what you need on the outside speed because you got to threaten that corner, you know, make him think that you can run by him, and Quez can do that. A highlight performance that you would not expect 
Kenny Gainwell touching the ball six times for 53 yards. Awesome. I, a lot of people are down on Kenny Gainwell, and I don't understand it. Well, no, they're not down on him. I just don't think they expect much because he hasn't I don't get seen it. a lot of play time. He gets into the end zone. He, he runs hard between he the tackles. Hard. He's, a good, he's, good, he's a good blocker. He catches the football. I think we're going to get him, by the way, in the, in the next couple of weeks here um, for right. the show. Oh, please. Okay. Would love to have. Hold on. It, you guys know this. I gave Kenny Gainwell a ton of props. I get it. Memphis. We'll not- let him know if he's here next week. <laughs> but Marcus Epps will be here next week. Oh, that's great because I hosted last year when Marcus was with us. Good. Well, awesome. then you don't have to worry about too much. No, I, I was a huge proponent and a huge supporter of Kenny Gainwell. Even though, you know, Memphis, not, you know, the powerhouse school that it comes from, but it's he, excellent player. He's solid depth. He gives us solid, solid depth. depth yeah. And that's what you need. I really liked that kid in the last game of the season last year against the Cowboys. He was playing behind a backup offensive line with backups and he ran the ball hard. That's the only reason why I think we lost the game by 30 instead of 40 with how he performed in that first half. He played really well. I don't know if he's ever going to get to the feature back level, but he serves a purpose and he serves it well. I have to bring up the elephant in the room. We didn't want to talk about it earlier. No, you didn't want to talk about it. No. No, I didn't want to talk about Thank it. Thank you. And Dave knows you exactly didn't want to talk what about it. No, Dave knows exactly what I'm talking about. Out of nowhere, Nicobe Dean, who we wanted to see succeed in every way, leads the team in tackles. On Sunday, including a tackle for a loss. Dave. Yeah, I mean, he came in. He was When Kaiser went down with the ankle injury, he came in. He played well. He was really active. He was good in coverage. Very secure tackler. It's it's great to see that. It's great to know that Nakobe is ready when he is called upon. These are players who are going to be needed at some point down the stretch this season. Five games to go. Injuries can happen. Nakobe Dean is ready. And it was obvious to me that he was ready to play because when he did get in the game, you kept seeing him flash everywhere on TV. You kept seeing him flashing across the screen. So he was ready for the uh, opportunity and he rose to the occasion. It's like Dave said, injuries can happen. Injuries have been happening. So and the guys that have been stepping into those roles have been playing well. And even like we just got Jordan Davis back. I think he had six, uh, six snaps the other day, and, and he had no tackles. But but they're gonna but they're gradually bringing him back into the fold, and they don't have to rush him. You know, the Linval Joseph and the Dominican Sue and Hargrave and and Fletch Fletch looks like a new man these last couple of weeks. And well, Sue he doesn't and, have to and, play as many snaps. Right. right. I mean, I think he had. I think Hargrave led the team or led the defensive tackles and snaps with twenty eight, and Fletch had twenty seven. I think Sue had close to that too, and I think Linval Joseph was around sixteen. They're, they're bringing them along, but man, the, just the attitude that those two have brought to the locker room since they've been here—it's been incredible to watch. And I, I think that it's not just keeping him fresh on the field. I think it's it kind of takes a little bit of the edge of the leadership from from Fletch bringing those two guys in to have experience and have won Super Bowls as well. Did you see Fletch run Tannehill out of bounds? That was he was that was back. awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, and he escorted awesome. him. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the best part he was didn't get a penalty as a veteran. Yes. As a veteran, you saw him do this. Yep. Yes. Yep. He totally, kind of totally totally him. Butterfly. <laughs> yeah. Everything. All right. The defense. Yeah, I want to hear who else is on the list. Uh, we're getting there. The defensive line. All right. Fun stats. Ready? Josh Sweat. Two sacks. One tackle for a loss. Javon Hargrave. One sack. One tackle for a loss. Brandon Graham. One sack. One tackle for a loss. Fletcher Cox. One sack, one tackle for a loss. Noticing a pattern here. Hassan Reddick, one sack. But he had four quarterback hits. I'm just saying that was the reason why I said to Kaiser, could you tell Hassan to pick it up? Because there wasn't a tackle for a loss. <laughs> That's Pick it up on the field or pick up the check at dinner? Yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> whatever. Can both. That, yes, yes, he can. <laughs> uh, that again, which we have seen time and time again this season, is exactly what we wanted to see from the defensive line. Tannehill had no shot at being competitive in this game. He was pounced on on a regular basis. And I'm making fun of the Hassan Reddick. Hey, man, you didn't have a tackle for a loss along with your sack. Hey, it it is 
fun watching this defensive line just completely eat up exactly what we think is not competitive in this league. Keep going to, on your list. I agree. Defensive line did a great job. Keep, keep Hold going. on. Hold on. I want to hear some names. There's a couple things I want to get to, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Special, well, special teams. Most, most, most importantly, uh, Zach, don't mention, don't mention any other names. I'm just, I'm just saying. Well, like, There's one other name that you have Tana to mention. Hill, yeah. Tana You're Hill, all waiting for it. He, he, not, not that guy. Tannehill also didn't really have a shot after Traylon Burks got drilled by Marcus Epps, which looked like a perfect hit to me. Uh, but man, the good thing was he was he was fine after he caught him in the face. He I good. Catch him in the <laughs> and the little, final little the face mask, but yeah, right. and the final name, six returns for 105 yards. Our first guest on the Green Legion Radio Player Show here at Live Casino in September, Britton Covey made this team better. Woo! Three of those Sunday. three of those returns over 20 yards. I thought actually what was interesting, you know, Irv. That punter outkicked his coverage, hundred percent, and, and, and gave Britain a chance to return the ball. Of course, and so and Britain and I, we've we've talked about it all year. Like he, he said, this guy Gunnar Olszewski or whatever his name is, he's with the Steelers now. He played with the Steeler with the uh, Patriots before. Has told Britain all year, it, it only takes the, that first one. Sometimes you got to do it on your own, and then after the first one, you'll find out how much easier it comes. Exactly. So I'm hopeful for Britain that we are now seeing. Some explosiveness in the return game. And and that's what I oh, oh, go ahead, Sam. I'm sorry. No. Ladies no, first. I was just gonna say that unless was, you want to go first, or Alexis was sitting next to me. That was my favorite part of Sunday. I was screaming, I was standing. This was the best part of Sunday for me because I just wanted to see him succeed. And now you can tell he has the confidence to keep going. And, and that's yes, kind of what that's kind of what I was saying. That he just to me Cut didn't that look, audio. He didn't look comfortable <laughs> back there catching the ball, but now he got the opportunity, got a little, you know, space between him and the defensive players. I mean, he had a 27-yarder or 28-yarder. You said 100 – how many yards? 105, right? 105. 106. So, so 106. That's, that's a whole football field. Is that's real oh, estate. 105. That's, that's less work for the offense. That's 10 first downs that the offense doesn't have to fight for. And the fun part about this is you don't have to talk about Boston Scott returning kickoffs because they didn't score. <laughs> Hey, by the way, I think the one name that we're missing to is Reed Blankenship. Um, ah, damn it! You got to me right before. No. 100% Reed Blankenship. I need, I need to see this on the run. He's a heat-seeking missile. I love him. He I love the way a, he... he got, now, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to try to exploit him and put him in coverage, and we'll see how he does. Can he, it's not the next two But weeks. otherwise, right. man, he can play. He can play. Can yes, I just point can. out on Sunday, I said Covey would have 105 return yards. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you saying that. I thought yeah, I heard Quinby yeah, say that. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, uh, from top to bottom, an excellent performance once again by the Philadelphia Eagles. I hope this – Got to do it Sunday. It's all new week here, man. New Absolutely. week. New success. Yeah, but you know what? Dave, I, I, again, I've been confident about this the entire year. I'm going to continue to be confident about it. And Just like his race against Irv. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody – we will see you at 9.30 a.m. or we will hear you at 9.30 a.m. on the bus ride up the turnpike to the Meadowlands, Let's the go. swamp. Let's go. The swamp. Your favorite place. God, I, 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 I hate it up there. I, I can't. There. I, I cannot give you the analogy I would like. <laughs> Everyone, on behalf of myself, Quimby slash Sack. Host of your Philadelphia Eagles Insider Podcast, Mr. Dave Spadaro. Yeah. Yeah. Super Sam Brady. Yeah. The Whole legendary leather. receiver, the doctor, <laughs> the reverend, <laughs> Irving Fryer, and intern, Lauren <laughs> Powell. Woo. John thank, Jensen in studio. We thank Live Casino once again for having us here Ooh. this week. You guys, <laughs> Green Legion Radio Player Show, Fox Sports The Gambler, 102.5 FM, Philadelphia. We will see you again, hear you again on sunday oh and john jansen back in the studio pretending like he does something <laughs> if you're looking thanks for jansen you you're clear good thanks, stuff john, uh john are you gonna be in the studio on sunday most likely i know sean threw out jeremy but because i'm gonna be probably just working my ass off all weekend but i want to do it Okay. Tell Quimby I'll send in. I've been uh, I've been terrible about it. I will send in, you know, all the invoice stuff today.